Yeah. Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name and we thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. Father, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that every single person who has ever listened to this show, everyone in the past, the present, and even in the future, Father God, will be touched in such a manner that they will receive that outpouring of the holy fire, that we will not take for granted the opportunity that you have laid before us and the things that were written in our book before there was time before we were even born on this earth. And we just praise you for that. Proverbs, uh, we thank you, Father God. Proverbs 139, verse 16, Ephesians 2, 10. We thank you, Father. We praise your holy name. Father, we also want to just just pray in Jesus' name that you will just infill us, that you will touch us with a, with a sense of knowing, a blessing of a sort that comes upon us, that helps us to understand that as part of our relationship with you, that we do not want to, t- to, to limit you in any way. That as the trials and tribulations and the difficulties that occur to us in our lives, no matter what they are, no matter what variety they are, no matter how intense they may seem to be at any given time, no matter how overwhelming or or possibly uh, seem, you know, the, the, the way to, to many of us, Father God, they seem to be insurmountable at times. And Father, we don't know which way to turn. We don't know which way, you know, all we know that is that sometimes we don't even know how to pray. We don't even know how we ought to pray about the things that are happening to us at, at any given moment. And Father, we just hope that we just hope and we we lift you up we magnify you we praise your holy name and we ask you father in jesus name that you will place a spirit of remembrance upon our hearts that you will help us to remember that no matter how difficult things become no matter how challenging things are in our lives no matter what what bump that we seem to be going or mountain that we seem to be trying to to get over uh and and period of difficulty and tribulation that we may be going through in our lives father that you will continue to remind us that the spirit that the holy spirit will just resonate within our spirit and will just come upon us and just help us to be able to see that if we could only sit there and say, Father, thank you. Thank you, Father God, for this trial and tribulation. Thank you, Father God, for this difficult time. Thank you, Father, for putting me into a position uh, that, 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 that doesn't seem to have any light at the end of the tunnel, that, that causes me to come to a place of complete and absolute and total trust in you, Father, because we know that this is the relationship that you want from each of us. Father, we may slip and fall. The steps of good men are ordered by the Lord, uh, and, and, and you delight in his ways. Uh, but but uh, though he may fall, he will not be utterly cast down. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue to uphold us. Father, fill us with the presence of your Holy Spirit in such a way that no matter what happens in our lives, no matter what difficulties we have to, to, to go through, that we will remember to praise you. Praise you, Father God, for our homes. We praise you, Father God, for our families. We praise you, Father God, for saving the souls of our children. We thank you, Father God, for saving the souls of our loved ones. We thank you for hearing our prayers. If we do not get receive the answer to our prayers in kind we praise you father god for receiving them in gold or silver or even diamonds later because you have the ability to see into the future you know what it is that what it is that we need and you know uh, that, that that when we go through the refining fire when we go through these difficult times providing that we continue to remember you and lift you up and praise you and thank you for the blessings that you have given us in our lives father that 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 that, that the abundance of your glory will fall upon us and that the ultimate ultimate end result will be a refining, a changing of us in such a way that we we, we, we will just glorify in, in everything that you are. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you will pour out your love upon our hearts, that we will fall so deeply in love with you, that we will fall so deeply in love with our Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, we pray that you will be in our presence during our prayers. We ask you, Father, for angels to be in our presence, that we will be able to be completely immersed in our time with you on our knees, Father, in our, in our prayer closets, where Wherever it is that we are called to pray, Father, even throughout the day as we are lifting you up and glorifying your name and thanking you for our challenges, we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus that you will fill us. Fill us with only you. Fill us with a love that is so obsessive. So obsessive that 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 we we just fall to sleep even on our difficult days, we fall asleep with a smile on our face, thinking of you, knowing your glory, knowing the ecstasy that awaits us, knowing the beauty of the place that we are about to come for the, come to father uh, the, the mansions and the beautiful homes that you have that, uh, that you have built for us that that are awaiting us help us to keep our mind stayed on things above and not on things of this earth, help us, Father God, to walk in your divine obedience 
obedience and to understand what that means to be able to continuously seek ye first the kingdom of God and your righteousness. Lord God, we ask you to help us to practice righteousness, to continuously confess of our sins, to be in a constant state of self-examination, that we should not have to be chastened in a severe manner. But if we do need to be chastened, Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you will chasten us in accordance with thy holy will, that we will be knocked right back onto that narrow path and be able to receive that joy that you have for each and every one of us when we realize that you have so deeply blessed us so easily. It is so easy, Father. And you know this, and you know this all about us. Psalm 139 says it all throughout the entire chapter. What a beautiful chapter, Father. We praise you for it. We know that you know our thoughts. We know that you know every word that is on our mouths. Father, we know that you you are constantly looking at us and, 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 and just examining our hearts. And, Father, we just pray in Jesus name, that whatever it is that is inside of us, whether whether it be uh, difficulty maintaining self-control, the difficulty overcoming sometimes bouts of depression or anxiety or whatever it may be that we're going through, difficulty being able to handle the things that are happening in our lives, maybe through our spouses, through our children, that uh, you know, through our workplaces, whatever it may be, Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you will give us that joy of your salvation so that we may lead others by shining the light to the glory of the Lord, uh, of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ to all of those around us. Fill us with the presence of your Holy Spirit so that it explodes from, from within us. Help us to be able to see and live in the end result. And that is you, Father, bringing us to that expected end. And we give you all the praise, worship, and glory for you alone are worthy, Father. You are alone are worthy, Father. We praise your holy name, and we thank you, Jesus, our advocate of the new covenant. We thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name. Let us, Father God, walk the way that you want us to walk and to be forever, forever striving for holiness and righteousness and all things that we think, do, say, and feel. Help us to understand and read your word, burying ourselves in it, so that we might not sin against thee. And Father, help us also to remember to confess continuously when we dork up. We need your help. Lord Jesus, we ask you to help us capture those troubling little foxes, those sly little foxes that attempt to ruin that budding vineyard of love which you have planted within us. We need you, Lord Jesus. We know that you understand, and we praise you for those days that you carry us because we can no longer walk. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the adoption as children to our Abba Father, and we pray in Jesus' name that today, tomorrow, and the next day, every day that you have us live on this earth is one that we have uh, more and more joy. And, 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 and just to sing your praise and to glorify you in all things that we do. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. You know, isn't it amazing? Now, I don't know. I can't, you know, I don't know, every, you know what, what's going on in everybody's lives out there. But I can say that, you know, uh, from some of the interactions that I've had in the emails and things that have come in, uh, and also some of my own personal experiences that, you know, it, it, we're, we're living in a period of time where I believe without, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that the darkness is rising, that the, 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 uh, the demonic realm is more powerful now than I can recollect, uh, you know, from, from all of the years that I've been doing this program, and even the years years prior to that, uh, several years prior to that, that I was just writing articles on Tribulation Now, uh, going back into 2009, et cetera, um, you know, it, it, I don't think I've ever seen anything like what we're experiencing right now. Um, I'm seeing uh, people, uh, you know, uh, stepping away from their computers, uh, taking time off from their ministry, uh, seeking the Lord uh, more fervently uh, in private time, which I think is awesome. Uh, I love personally to just sit in the dark sometimes and or in a very dimly lit room and just, you know, close my eyes and just talk to the Lord and focus on him. I think we should all be in that place. Um, the Lord wants interaction. He wants us to have conversations with us, he, with him. He wants us, he wants an intimate relationship with us. And if we have things that are on our heart that is troubling us, uh, things that we're challenged with, things that we don't understand, why is this happening to me, Father? Can you help me understand these things? You know, that, that kind of back and forth interaction, I really believe with all of my heart, absolutely.
absolutely believe with all my heart is exactly the kind of relationship that our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus want with us. And these are the kinds of things that we cannot, you know, we just really can't have those things unless we are able to set aside that special time to just be alone with him and to talk with him and to, to be in his presence. And I think, I think that's a real powerful blessing. But one of the things I've noticed is this increase in the darkness. I, 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 I can't explain it exactly, but I get emails from people and they tell me what they're going through, the experiences and the things that they're seeing or whatever's happening in their families or their, fa- you know, their, their lives. And um, uh, it's, 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 a stu- it's stupendous. I mean, it's, I, it's like, wow. Uh, you know, um, I, I, I can't, you know, I, I could sit here and I could itemize a lot of them and give examples of them and said, well, this person, this happened to this person, this happened to that person, and this happened to this person, here's another person. And, you know, I just kind of make this big list of examples out there, but I don't want to, you know, of course I would never want to uh, mention anybody's names and certainly not, you know, uh, publicly and embarrass anybody. That wouldn't be the point. But the point is that the number is very high. Uh, and, and what I'm seeing is slipping and falling in ways that are pretty significant. Uh, and, um, I, you know, in a bit, you know, big things, not just little things, you know, not, 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 not like having like a really bad day, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, getting into a state of mind or whatever that is essentially a type of sin before the Lord or whatever the case may be that you're going through or just getting mad and angry and dropping some, you know, language that you should not be dropping or, or whatever the case, or feeling a certain way about a person and, and being overt about it. Uh, but, but, and, and there's so many other ways, but I mean, I'm talking about big things. People, they, they, I'm seeing people fall down in big, 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 big ways. Uh, and, um, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, I, I, it has to be associated with, and doggone these new blood pressure pills my doctor gave them. They really work great, but they, they give me this incredibly dry mouth. Hold on just a second. Ah, I love ice water. Yummy, yummy ice water. Right, kids? Don't you love ice water, too? Ah. Mm. Yeah, you guys are the best Jesus kids ever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for you guys. (laughs) All right, amen. But, uh, yeah, and uh, I just thought I would share that with you because I have a feeling that I'm not the only one. I mean, you know, if I'm getting emails from people and they're saying, oh, man, this is is really creeping me out. Things are getting weird out there, you know. Uh, And and I'm like, all I can do is say, praise Jesus. I live like Elijah, kind of tucked away in my little, you know, I I jokingly say sometimes (laughs) to people that I uh, uh, talk to now and then that I kind of live a life like I have like one of those ankle bracelets on and you're not allowed to leave your house. (laughs) And now with, uh, with, uh, with, you know, you can get almost everything you can imagine delivered to your home. And I have always hated shopping. Shopping has never been, I'm I'm a typical guy when it comes to shopping, I want to get in, grab it and get out as fast as I can. Uh, you know, so then, uh, you know, with, with Amazon and, uh, and now they have this thing called, I know there's other services too, but they have this thing called Instacart and, uh, and, uh, and you, you know, for a reasonable fee, annual fee, you can get like free delivery, you know, of food brought, you know, right from the local grocery store and stuff. And I'm just like this, I'm spoiled from that. Uh, cause I don't really like being out in public very much. I don't know about you. Now, some people probably do, uh, you know, and that's cool. There's not, you know, and then some people, li- you know, like to be a part of their church and do all kinds of churchy things and stuff, you know, and, and get Jesus hugs and whatever, play in the band uh, or sing in the choir. And then that's cool too. Praise God. You know, the Lord's going to have, Lord has us dispersed. I believe the Lord has us dispersed in different places with different callings. Uh, we all have different callings. There were different things written, you know, uh, again, if you go back to uh, Psalm 139, 16, and, and again, I, I do, I repeat this one a lot because I just love it. And, um, um, uh, and it's uh, here or real quick, and um, I'm going to go ahead and use the, I believe, the NLT version. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Wow, every day. Check that out. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. And then I really like this. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me. Know my anxieties. 
Point out anything in me that offends you, Father, and lead me along to the path uh, everlasting of everlasting life. Praise God. Uh, and both of those from the NLT, but uh, the New King James does a pretty good job with them too. I like uh, uh, both of the, I, I like to jump around. I, I like to look at all kinds of different because sometimes you know you'll read a you'll read a scripture <clears throat> you know from from a particular translation and then you'll you'll you, maybe you'll jump over to another translation and you'll be like, oh, that's it, uh, and uh, and then it's a real blessing. I mean, there are some, uh, and I mentioned this before, there are some, and I try to point out as many of them as I can find, but there are some, uh, you know, translations uh, that are just downright, well, they're downright incorrect. And you know it, you know it because they don't make any sense. And then, and then you get a translation, you, you look at another translation, you're like, oh my gosh, that's it. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I can find the one here, which I really like. I think it's 1310. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and see, anyone who's type of sword. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so, uh, so like if you look at the new King James, this is such a great example, or, or we'll go, we'll go with the, uh, King James in this case, uh, revelation 13, verse 10, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword will be killed with the sword. Here's here is the patience and the faith of saints. Okay. Well, if if you're leading into captivity and you should go into captivity, what what does that exactly mean? He who leads into captivity will go into captivity. That not nah, that that ain't right. But then you go over to like the the NLT in this particular case. Uh, praise Jesus, Hallelujah! And I just clicked the button wrong, so it's kind of dorking up my computer here. Here we go. It says, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Anyone who is destined to go to prison will be taken to prison, and anyone who is destined to be to die by the sword will die by the sword. Okay, so, and this is talking about the saints. So, um, you know, I guess, uh, you know, as the days grow darker and, uh, you know, and stuff gets like super duper ultra ugly, that some of us will be Isaiah 57. Uh, and and I, I, for one, you know, I mean, I, I, I want to walk in, you know, the uh, in the works that the Lord has written about me before there was time. I do, uh, you know, although although I, admittedly, if Jesus did show up in the room right now and said, you know what, Johnny, you can, you know, if you're well, you're welcome to come home to heaven right now if you want to. I mean, you know, uh, you, you did a good job and, uh, you know, and uh, I, and you can come to heaven. I, I, you know, I'll tell you what, I'd be like, you know what? Cool. Let's do it. Uh, but Isaiah 57, 1, uh, I just love this. The righteous perishes, but no man takes it to heart. Merciful men are taken away, while no one considers that the righteous is taken away from evil. I mean, I think, it was, I think it's very, very, very cool uh, to be that the Lord would be that awesome to to take people away from evil. And, you know, of course, from our fleshy eyes here on the earth, we look at it as, oh, no, poor brother so-and-so died. Oh, that was just a terrible thing. We never think to ourselves that maybe God was blessing them and taking them to glory. I mean, who wouldn't want to be in glory? I don't know about y'all. I mean, but I don't, you know, I, I suppose there's probably some people out there that just have a, a wonderful life. It's just a wonderful life. And you can't wait to wake up tomorrow. You can't wait to go to work. You can't wait to sit in those boring meetings with the fluorescent lights and the Dilbert saying all that and, uh, yeah, 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 and all that stuff and human resources breathing down your neck and being afraid of saying anything or wearing a piece of jewelry that might offend an LGBT element of P and next thing you know, you're in big trouble and getting written up and you got a pip and then it's like, oh no. And it's just, oh, isn't life just a barrel of monkeys? And then when you're awake and aware, what a double-edged sword that is. Uh, I, I have here on my desk. I, I just had to have it. I, it's just one of those things. It, it, it you know, anything that makes me smile, uh, it, to me, it's worth its weight in gold. Okay, and you know, and, and I, I, admittedly, there are some things that make me smile that mm, some other, you know, other people may think are, well, maybe not of especially good taste. Like I have a, you know, an Obama uh, roll of, uh, uh, you know. Um, well, let's just say bathroom tissue, okay? 
<laughs> you know, uh, but uh, but it, it makes me laugh. And uh, I, you know, I think we all need to to smile sometimes. But I, you know, I saw this uh, on Amazon, and I had to have it. Uh, now it's it's good vitamins, and so um, uh, you know, I can always use good vitamins, and so I, you know, it wasn't a total waste of money. But it it actually is a bottle, and it says the red pill. Okay, and then I went ahead. Somebody had recommended to me that I go ahead and buy some of those uh, hot tamale, uh, spicy cinnamon candies because I can keep refilling it with those hot tamale, spicy cinnamon candies, which, by the way, look exactly like red pills. All right, uh, you know, and and why did I go on this tangent? Well, the, my point is this, you know, folks, talk about a double-edged sword. I remember when I was working, uh, you know, at one of the big four consulting companies, and um, something really, I forget what it was. I don't know if it was Jade Helm or something like that. And they had YouTube's YouTube uh, YouTube uh, uh, videos all over the place with just, I mean, must be 20 miles worth of flatbed trains with all kinds of tanks and all kinds of military equipment men and stuff being moved and everybody every Tom, Dick and Harry, Sally and Frank was out on YouTube going this is it, this is the end this is, you know, Jade Helm it's, it, this is the beginning of, and, oh my gosh and, and, and the fuss and the fuss and, uh, you know, and I, I kind of like you know, since I've been doing it so long, kind of knew it wasn't really going to amount to nothing, but anyway, uh, you know but but but, but it, there's a reason why they do those things, they, they're moving equipment around and it gives them the funding by calling it an exercise, they get the federal funding that they need, the military and et cetera, et cetera, and all the people and the personnel that they need to move equipment to where it needs to be for what they already know is coming, which is World War III. All right, so it really is just kind of that simple. Uh, but but anyway, I got this red pill thing, and I just, you know, it just makes me laugh. Uh, you know, uh, I, but the double-edged sword is this. So I'm working at this big four, and I'm talking to this guy in the break room, and I, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if it was Jade Hill. It might have been something similar, and uh, who it might have been the Cascadia sub production zone drills that they were having. They were also doing some NBC nuclear, biological and chemical uh, uh, drills, uh, you know, up in different uh, parts of the United States in different major areas. Uh, And I found that highly suspicious because, you know, it, we have every reason to believe that eventually they're going to, you know, detonate um, uh, ground-based nu- nuclear bombs in several major cities in the United States. These things were revealed by our Heavenly Father through prophecies, dreams, and visions. So we're all on, we all ought to be on guard. But, you know, I had this heaviness on my heart, uh, and I forget, I was having a conversation with somebody in the break room, or somebody I knew, and, um, and I, I mentioned a couple of these things, and he stopped and he looked at me, and this is years and years ago. And he stopped and he looked at me and he said, you know, that must be really rough carrying that burden on your heart all the time, knowing about those things. And I never forgot that. And it has echoed through my heart and mind over all of the years, because when you do, you know, it's one thing to take a red pill. It's another thing to gobble down the whole bottle, right? And a lot of us probably have had just, well, maybe several bottles by now, right, kids? <laughs> yeah, the kids are only cheering because they like the cinnamon ones, and uh, and I don't blame them. They're good. All right, so, um, uh, and it's, it, is, it is kind of like it's a blessing in the sense that, um, uh, you know, uh, it, that, that we, we are awake and aware. We are, we have been um, primed, if you will, to uh, prepare ourselves in holiness and righteousness before the Father and seek Jesus with all of our heart. doesn't mean that we don't slip and fall now and then. It just means that we need to really put a heavy-duty effort in it. Physician, heal thyself, raising my right hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I slip and fall just like everybody else. We're all in this together. We're all in this mess together, and none of us are perfect. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. We just have to fight the good fight. We got to continuously practice righteousness for he who practices righteousness is righteous just as he, Jesus, is righteous. First John 3, 7. Hallelujah. And he who sins willfully and habitually is of the devil, which means they're being influenced by the devil. It doesn't mean that they belong to the devil. All right. Praise God. The Lord revealed that to me. And I was like, oh, now that makes a lot more sense because before I was like, hey. All right. But anyway, so um, <clears throat> praise God. Uh, at least we have a root cause. At least we have, uh, you know, a, a pretty good understanding. You know, when you know what you're up against, when you realize that the darkness is rising up on a level that that is beyond, well, what I've ever seen before. I've never seen it 
quite as bad as it is as it is right now. And um and 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 people falling and, and big things, real big things. Uh, you know, and and um, it's kind of scary. It's very sobering to realize that we could potentially and probably most likely are in the last hour of the of the end of times, and that um and and that the the, the this there's this crescendo of darkness that is affecting. I mean, there's a reason I believe I take the scriptures very literally these days, and uh and and when I look at the wise virgins falling asleep. That really concerns me. Uh, you know, if the if the wise virgins fell asleep too, uh, that boy, that means that that those of us who are who have you know gobbled down a couple of bottles of these red pills over the years, we really got to watch our p's and q's. And the other thing is that we're also we also got big targets on our backs. So so you can expect to be pummeled by the darkness, to be have more and more fiery darts, bigger and more powerful fiery darts fired at you in the spiritual realm, and that means you have to be on guard and um and when you're like i am uh and you tend to be a little bit more reactive than you ought to be uh then uh you know you're going to be more vulnerable to not reacting in grace and peace and uh you know the way that you ought to react so i'm i'm constantly reminded by the lord uh about the fruits of the spirit and especially uh you know and and i if I, i hold on just a second i think it's uh yeah i know where it is praise god galatians it's uh, right after Galatians 5:19. I think it's 5:20. Uh, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, dub, 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 dub. Here we go. But the Holy Spirit produces. Oh, I got. The, I, I want my other translation for this one. Okay. Now, um, uh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, which means that you got to have like, you know, superhuman patience. Wow, that's a hard one for a lot of us. Kindness. Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Gentleness and self-control. The self-control one is tough. That's tough. And the gentleness one, you know, and then you got uh, Philippians 4, 4, 5, and 6, you know, where it says, uh, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. You know, let your gentleness be made known to all men. You know, I, I have people write me sometimes and they're like, well, what about righteous indignation? Why shouldn't we be able to, you know, why should, you know, this and that? I'm like, no, no, no. We're, 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 read the B attitudes. The B attitudes. See, we're, we're, the, the rules are different. You know, we are in the under the love covenant and we are commanded to behave exactly like Jesus behaved precisely uh, while he was on the earth. It doesn't matter that he's coming back with ten thousands of his saints. That's his business. That he's God. Okay, and 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 and, and you know, and that that's for a time that he has designated uh, as a period, uh, you know, associated with the ends, uh, you know, the end of Revelation and the judgments uh, that are going to be coming upon the earth. They're going to be really super duper duper bad. Okay, but that's really, you know, that's Jesus's call. In the meantime, in our walk, we we walk in love. We walk in gentleness. We walk in kindness. We walk. We 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 exhibit self control. And that that that's a very hard thing to do when you're getting pummeled from the left and to the right and, you know, from beneath and from above and every other place under the sun. Right, kids? <laughs> yeah, ah, you guys, you guys, you got it good. <clears throat> yeah. hey, any of you kids want my job? <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm always joking around with Brother Jeff Varley. I'm like, hey, man, let's trade jobs. And he's like, no way, bro. <laughs> Forget that. Get out of here. Get away from me. I rebuke you, Satan. Uh, you know, and, and, I, and I'm like, amen. Praise Jesus. Uh, but anyway, uh, but we, you know, we all got our lots in life. We all got the things that the Lord, the, the works that were written in, in, in our books, you know, before there was time, uh, the works that we are to walk in, uh, God's bringing us to an expected end and we've got to go through these different trials and they're different for every one of us. Uh, so what we got to do, and this is helping me out a lot. And I know I mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it again, live in day tight compartments, look at every day as a new opportunity to start start again. And remember, thank God. I saw this little saying and I was just like, oh, that's awesome. I, it, it said something along the lines of, uh, and I'll probably dork it up, but it said something along the lines of, 
Imagine if you woke up tomorrow and the only things that you had in your life were the things that you remembered to thank God for the day before. Can you imagine that? We are kind of pathetic, aren't we? I mean, really, I have this other little saying that I, I have on my laptop, and I look at it all the time because it really – it's just one of those things you just you just don't want to forget it. Now, they're attributing it to Shakespeare, and I know I shared this before, but I'm going to share it again. I cried when I had no shoes, but I stopped crying when I saw a man with no legs. If we spent just a little bit more time, see, not to mention all of the benefits, all of the supernatural benefits that are associated with praise. The Lord God inhabits the praises of his people. The, the fastest way to get the presence of the Holy Spirit and the presence of our Father and the presence of Jesus and that supernatural peace that passes all understanding upon our hearts and minds through the power of Christ Jesus within us. Okay, this fastest way to change your circumstances, to break loose in those shackles, those prison doors, is from the bottom of your heart being grateful. Even though the things that you are praising for, you would have to be, well, a peculiar person, and we are a peculiar people, uh, you know, you would have to be uh, really um, kind of, you know, in the eyes of the, of, 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 the, of, the, of the earthy people, earthly people out there that are not part of the citizenry of heaven, uh, they, they would think you're nuts. They think you're absolutely crazy. What in the world is the matter with you? Why are you thanking God for that? And uh, But you know what we have to? We have to say, Father, you know, th this looks like a really bad thing to me, Lord, but I trust you. I love you. I believe in you. You are everything to me. I thank you for every drink of water. I praise you, Father God, for the appliances in my house that they're working. I thank you that my roof is not leaking. I praise you, Father God, for my job, even though I don't like it sometimes. I thank you, Father God, for my blessings. I thank you, Father. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I, I Right now, since I have started living in those day tight compartments and spending extra time itemizing. I try to think of every little thing that I have overlooked and I forgot to praise God for and I explicitly thank him for it. I explicitly praise him for it because you know what? There is, I can't explain it, but it, 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 it kind of goes back to when Jesus said, you know, as a man, you know, and, I, and again, I think this might be a proverb, uh, but, uh, you know, I forget. But as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And then, uh, you know, and then there's power in our tongues, right, which is why we need to confess of our sins, not just sit there quietly and, you know, think, oh, Lord, I shouldn't have done that. No, 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 no. You, you speak it. You've got to speak it forth. You've got to say it. Okay, but, you know, when, when you know, uh, uh, it's not what goes into a mouth that defileth a man is what comes out of a mouth that defileth a man. That, go, that goes to show you how, vi how, how very, very powerful, uh, you know, our, our, when, when Jesus resides in us, when that power of Christ is a part of who we are, when the Holy Spirit is residing in us and we haven't grieved him and, and, we're, and we're seeking God in repentance with a contrite spirit, uh, you know, that you come to a place in your walk where, where that, there's power. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. And when you use that power that you were given, uh, you know, especially if you're, if you're one of the uh, folks that, that can, you know, commit you know, scriptures to memory and, and, and the scriptures just come bubbling up inside of your heart and you can speak them forth because the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. He was 12. Praise God. When, when that becomes a part of your walk, a part of your life, it can be and absolutely will be life changing. You'll have things happen to you and you'll know it. it I, there are things that, I'm telling you folks, there are things that have happened to me that would have, would have, you know, if, if they, it happened 10 years ago, I would have lost it. I would have absolutely lost it. And I praise Jesus that um, so, some of these things that have happened to me over the last couple of years that were earth shattering. I mean, they were life. I mean, folks, please. I mean, unbelievable. If I if you knew, if you knew some of the things that I have gone through in the last couple of years, you'd be like, 
dude, I mean, I don't know how you're even holding it together. And it's, you know, it's, it, it, you know, it really is through the power of Jesus. It is knowing that we can get on our knees. We can submerge ourselves in the presence of God. We can praise him and thank him truly from the bottom of our heart for all of the blessings that we do have completely trusting in him because he will keep us in perfect peace. Isaiah 26, three, he will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him him because we trust him praise god thank you jesus hallelujah that's the way i want to live that's the way i hope that you want to live and we're getting lots and lots of lots and lots of lots of lots of more uh, uh prophecies that have come out you know in the last 30 days or so that kind of seem to indicate that we're getting pretty close now here's the problem in all in all well fairness you know, one day is as of a thousand years to the Lord, or you know what I'm saying? So we, the word soon, the word imminent, the words now, uh, you know, when, when we see these in prophecies, we just have to put it on a shelf and take and, and just accept the grace. Ask the Father, ask your Lord, ask Abba Father, say, Father, you know, I need more of your grace. I need more manifold grace, Lord Jesus. I need your love. I need to feel your presence. I need to have that peace. I need to know that everything's going to be fine. Live in that daytight compartment. Fill yourself with praise. Thank the Lord for every little thing that is a part of, you know, your blessings portfolio. Because believe you me, if you put any thought into it at all, I believe that you probably have a thousand more blessings in your life than you even realize. We, what it is about us, I don't know, but it's definitely a part of the flesh. But the grass is always greener, and we're always so busy thinking about the green grass on the other side of that electric fence uh, that, uh, that, you know, we, we forget. We forget to praise. Again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. How much more so does God bless us? How much more so will our lives change? Will the joy of Jesus become a part of who we are? How many things that we have prayed for as the persistent widow widow of Luke 18 – that we and that we, that we may even be going through a phase where of befuddlement. You know, we're we're just befuddled. We're like, why, Lord, am I not seeing the revelation? Why am I not, am I not seeing the answers to these prayers? Maybe it's because we're limiting God. We're limiting God because we're forgetting how much He has blessed us, not just with what we have today in our blessings and our walk, but also the many, many, many times that he has blessed us in days gone by. You know what? I, I love I love the uh, book by Dale Carnegie I'm reading, uh, you know, How to Stop Worrying. And, and uh, hold on a second. Yeah, how to stop worrying and and living, uh, you know, and uh, and it's it's just full of gems, and I just love it. And you know what, folks, it's it's so true. You know, what's the worst thing that could happen? I mean, really, when you think about it, you know, I used to think just so so one, and this is one of the little, you know, guidances, one of the little guiding uh, uh, principles that Dale Carnegie in that book. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, that he has in the book. He has a whole bunch of guiding principles. Well, one of the guiding principles is when you're dealing with a situation that's, you know, kind of sucks rotten eggs, sucks balut, balut, right, kids? Run from the balut, kids. Yeah. Run from the balut. Whew. But anyway, um, uh, you know, when you're dealing with one of those situations, always ask yourself, what's the worst thing that could happen? You know what? When you face the worst possible thing that could happen, you know, I, I, I wrote on my whiteboard the other day. I, I reminded myself by writing on the whiteboard, I, I put a list of the worst things that could happen to me and what my alternatives would be if those things did happen. And then I wrote at the bottom of that list. I reminded myself of a phenomenon, and I think many of you listening to this will remember this. It it, it may be applicable to you. I don't know. I can't read your mind, and I quite frankly don't want to. But um, uh, uh, But think about this. Do you have a time that you can remember in your life, whether or not you were walking with the Lord at the time or not, 
when things, when you really had kind of a crummy job, you, you know, money was super tight. Um, uh, you don't know how you got by at all. But when you reflect back on those days, you realize that those were some of the happiest days that you had in your, in your whole life. I actually had that. I had a period of time back in the early 90s when I was seeped in sin. I mean, I dripped sin like Pennzoil motor oil. I mean, I, you know, because I was once saved, always saved. And after all, I didn't have to worry about sin. Why? Well, I, uh, I was going to heaven no matter what. I had my trifold b- pamphlet. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I spoke in tongues so I could sin all I wanted to. Yeah, right. Whew. Oh, God help us, Lord Jesus. But anyway, uh, it was in the early 90s, and um, I'd gone through some really difficult times financially. And you know what's really fascinating? And I ended up uh, you know, having to file bankruptcy. It was bad. Let me just let you know it was exceedingly bad. And, uh, of course, at the time that I was going through that period, uh, it, it seemed like you know, kind of like the end of the world. But you know something? When I reflect back to those days, when I remember when when uh, everything got cleared up, I had no credit. Um, I had a job that didn't pay worth a darn. Um, and I look back on that part of my life. And what's really fascinating is I was at more peace. I had more peace, more joy, and enjoyed my time. On in the world, you know, doing things and going places and taking my daughter roller skating and whatever the thing may be that I was doing. Uh, but I, I had what I've lost because I've gobbled down so doggone many of these red pills living on the edge of that double edged apocalyptic sword for so long that, you know, you know, what one of my favorite Bible verses is. And I don't really even completely understand the mystery of this of this scripture. And I don't think hardly I don't think anybody I know there's people out there that love to try to explain stuff. And they're like, well, what that really means is. And then I listen to them and, you know, I'm gracious and everything. But I, you know, kind of secretly disagree with them. Uh, praise God. But I just love this. Titus, here's a good mystery Bible verse for you. Titus 1:15. Meditate on this one. To the pure, all things are pure. To the pure, all things are pure. To those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and consciences are defiled. The only way I can reconcile that scripture, because, you know, when you take the red pill, you know everything ain't pure, right? Um and then you also have Philippians 4, 8 that kind of uh, paints an interesting dynamic whereby it's uh, – and every time I type that in there – hold on a second. I love Philippians 4, 8, by the way. I just wish I could completely – I wish this could co- totally become me. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure – see, there's that word again. To the pure, all things are pure. Whatever things are lovely and whatever things are of a good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate upon these things. Sometimes we just got to put the red pill bottle away. Sometimes we got to spend a little extra time praising God, thanking Jesus, and itemizing out all those blessings. Because if we don't have the true joy, How are we going to help other people see Jesus in us? It's kind of tricky. It's a bit of a balancing act. But the only way I was able to reconcile in my heart, Titus 1.15, because that one there is definitely a a mystery verse. And again, I'll read it again for you. To the pure, all things are pure. That's pretty cool stuff, isn't it? Let's see what the NLT says. Everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure, but nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving. Let's look at the Amplified. To the pure in heart and conscience, all things are pure, but to the defiled and corrupt and the unbelieving, nothing is pure. Hmm. 
fascinating. I wonder what the Woist Expanded New Testament says. This is the, this testimony is true, for which cause be rebuking them severely in order that they may be sound in faith and not – hold on a second. Let me see if I can find where uh, verse 10 is. Oh, uh, the Woist jumped me uh, – oh, okay. Yeah, here it is. All things are pure to those who are pure. So it says essentially the same thing. Kenneth Weiss dreamt in Greek. Okay, so I highly recommend that everybody has a copy of the Kenneth Weiss, W-U-E-S-T, Expanded New Testament. I was so pleased as peaches when I found out that it was included in my PC Study Bible Professional. I was like, yeah, hey, hallelujah. And he had to rearrange uh, the actual paragraph structure of the New Testament when he did the transliteration from Greek. Greek to English because it was wrong. Uh, because, you know, when, when you dream in Greek, you know exactly what the Greek is supposed to be saying and what the, where the thought begins and where the thought ends. And, and you know how a paragraph is supposed to basically convey a thought and be congruent from beginning to end. All right. Anyway, so I, I love it. I, I like to use it as my tiebreaker when I get confused about things. But right here, it just says the same thing. So the only way I was able to reconcile that in my heart to the pure, all things are pure, was I had to remember what Jesus said about the little children. And um, you know, when you, when, you, when you hang out with a little kid, and that's the thing I miss more than anything about my daughter being like six or seven years old, is because, and those of you who have children in that age group, how blessed are you? Because that's purity, providing that they haven't been defiled by video games and all kinds of other nasty things that they should not be exposed to. But when my daughter was like five and six years old and we would go and, you know, everything she saw was pure. She didn't really understand the darkness. Everything she saw was pure. The birds were pretty, you know, and if she saw somebody who was down and out, you know, it, it, the whole attitude of a young child is different. Their faith is amazing. You talk to them about God and their eyes light up and they're like, tell me more. You lay with them on a, a, you know, a beautiful green lawn on a cool summer night and you look up at the stars and they see the Lord everywhere. Seeing the world through the eyes of a pure-hearted child, I honestly believe, is the answer to the mystery of Titus 1.15. And I believe that that's ultimately what we want to all strive to get to in our walk as we seek the Lord. Through holiness, through righteousness. Holiness essentially this is a big part of being holy or you know working toward it as best as we can is separating ourselves from the things of the darkness separating yourself unto holiness oh i wish i could beam back in time to the days of the boga mills you know how how the early church they used to go out and build communities for those of you that live in Pennsylvania, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, a place you can tour uh, where the Ephrata Cloisters uh, had built a community, and they kind of kept to themselves there. Now, the Amish are a little bit more spread out today than they used to be, but they used to have their communities pretty tight-knit too. But farmland's running out, and they had to spread out and that kind of thing. But, but, th but that concept of separating yourself from society – with brothers and sisters that have love, that seek the Lord, that, you know, that whole concept is so fantastic and awesome, yet we're stuck on this alien demon infested rock, and there really is no way to get away from the darkness. Unless you, like, hide yourself in your house and get all delivery, <laughs> get all your food delivered, and Amazon Prime. And then, and then even then, eventually you're going to have to go out for something. But anyway, I, I, I pray in Jesus' name that uh, as, as we all live in the world of those who have taken the red pill, that somehow we can set aside that special time to look and find that purity of heart, that communion with Jesus, that love 
that abundant grace that will help us to take our hearts and minds off of the things of this earth and to have once again some joy, hopefully abundant joy, restored to our life even while we're going through difficult times. What a blessing that would be. Folks, as long as we got to be stuck here, right? As long as we got to be stuck here, we might as well praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Sing praise and just remember to be happy about, well, the times that we live in, the times of peace and safety, knowing that they're not going to last that much longer. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they, the unrighteous, shall not escape. Volcanoes do not say peace and safety. Meteors and fireballs do not say peace and safety. Two suns in the sky do not say peace and safety. Crevasses sucking buildings and homes down into the pit do not see peace and safety. Sinkholes all over the world of various sizes do not see peace and safety. Animal kills by the tens of thousands, in some cases millions, do not see peace and safety. Dead persecuted Christians do not see peace and safety. Hurricanes and hurricanes, melting ice and disappearing glaciers, wars in Syria, bombings from Israel into Syria, the Ukraine and Donetsk and the wars in Nigeria, deaths in Yemen and wars uh, and rumors of wars across the world do not say peace and safety. Outbreaks of Ebola, Zika, bubonic, bubonic plague in Marlborough across the world do not say peace and safety. Politicians say peace and safety. Mind control news says peace and and safety, and those who are not wise as serpents follow. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 6. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know what? And the funny thing about it is, and funny meaning odd or unusual, is to those of us who get it, to those of us who understand, that when these apocalyptic events ramp up, we don't know how long it's going to be. I, I don't. I didn't even let the word "soon," "imminent," "now," 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 "now" coming from prophets bother me anymore. I used to get kind of frustrated with it. Um, I even at one point marked calendars because I had some that would. They, they were so emphatic about the ark door is closing now. Uh, you know, now, soon, now, today. It's this is it. You know, run away. Uh, and uh, I, I started to actually go over to my calendar on the wall and writing it, writing what they said. You know, like the title of their prophecy. You know, six, seven months later, I'd be like, well, where was that? Oh, that was back in April. So then, you know, it's just kind of like now I just put it all on the shelf. But, but. It, nevertheless, I do want to receive anything that the Lord is uh, conveying through, you know, his servants, the prophets, uh, and, and be as prepared as I possibly can be. And there are blessings and admonishments in there that will help to keep us motivated and on track. But we definitely do not want to get a bee in our bonnet over the word soon, imminent, and everything else, because we don't know how much longer this is going to be, be going on. Are we going to have another relatively normal Christmas is here. I'm having another one of those fun gentleman bets with brother Jeff Byerly. He believes that all heck is going to break loose by mid June. Uh, and, uh, and I'm like, okay. And uh, he just feels that there's a convergence happening. And I'm like, I love, I love it. I love it. And I said, I said, Jeff, you know what? I, I got a hunch. We're going to be eating stromboli at your place in Hershey, Pennsylvania again this Christmas. And you know what? I hope this is the sound that I get to hear for thinking that. 
Matter of fact, I hope I hear this, and then I hope I hear this, I hope I hear this. And you know what? I wouldn't even mind, uh, you know, getting a little bit of this ow, over the top of my head. Maybe even a little of this. <laughs> Got to get my groove on, you know, get up on the uh, Golden GIB studio desks and kind of, you know, turn the butter. (laughs) But, you know, here's the thing. To those of us who know how this is going to all go down, now, we might not have every little tiny detail nailed down. We may not know exactly the order of events. One thing that we we ought to do is all the different events that we have collected and we know that are going to happen. In our list that we're all keeping, we're all keeping a list, right? You all have a list, right? You all bought a whiteboard. You have a big list of all these apocalyptic events because that's the only way you're going to – you got to watch. That's that's how you're going to know some. You know, if you want to know that the time is drawing nigh, you got to look at the events. And those events, well, not all of them, but a lot of them are going to map back to the Bible, the Olivet Discourse at a minimum. And some of them are going to be talked about, in some cases symbolically and metaphorically, in in books like Jeremiah and and Isaiah and such like that. But anyway, uh, but when you have that list, you know, you you know, you know, you have your list. You know, you know what you're looking for, and you can keep that, you know, squinty eye going on all those things, and and you know, hopefully be ready er, <laughs> readier, right? There is a such word as right. Right, kids? There's a such word as ready-er, isn't there? Okay, how about more ready? Kids? All right, kids. All right, kids. You guys are being good kids tonight, so let's go ahead and, uh, you know, have a little bit of Psalm 126, verse 2. Then our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with singing. And then they said amongst the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, if we only could just stay focused. Oh, is it hard? But we've got to have that fruit of the Spirit, self-control. Praise, praise, praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then. Our Father will will return to us the joy of our salvation, and we can lead more to the glory of the Lord Jesus. Oh, man, are we blessed. Man, are we blessed if we only knew it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, are, are you ready, kids? Are you ready? Okay, kids. Kids, what do you get if you cross a chicken? with a cow what do you get if you cross a chicken with a cow roost beef roost beef (laughs) what do you think kids pretty funny huh Uh, come on Uh, all right come on hey the chicken butt jokes usually work pretty good let me try another one here Uh, why do hens lay eggs why do hens lay eggs because if they drop them, they break. <laughs> Kids, come on. Oh, all right. There we go. All right. All right, kids. All right, kid. Kids, why did the chicken join the band? Why did the chicken join the band? Because she had drumsticks. <laughs> kids. <laughs> oh, okay. I wasn't sure I was going to get a a good one off of that. Okay, well, praise God. Well, anyway, on that note, uh, let's go ahead. <clears throat> let's go ahead, praise Jesus, and uh, and jump right on into the news. Uh, and just remember, uh, take your red pill bottle. <laughs> take your red pill, uh, and we'll go right into the news. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? It's not normal. It's just wrong. Game over. 
All right, praise God. So I've been getting a lot of emails uh, from various folks, and I thank each one of you. Uh, my email is jbaptist777, just like it sounds, jbaptist777 at gmail.com. And yes, you do not have to apologize and say, I am sorry for bugging you. You are not bugging me. Look. I'm just a, a schmo that wears, you know, a Hawaiian shirt, still got another 50 pounds to lose, which is like, the, it seems like it's impossible. I can't seem to get it off. But anyway, um, uh, you know, and, and you know what? We're all in this together, you know? And so, so if you see something out there that is just like, oh, I don't believe this is unbelievable, apocalyptic craziness. If you want to send it to me, go ahead. You're not bothering me. Praise Jesus. I'm just, we're all in this together. None of us look. Any one of us who's taken the red pill, or or guzzled, you know, or had, a, or you know, taken several of them, uh, you know, popping them like chicklets, as many of us have over the years. You know what we need? If, if, if fellowship, man. If, what are you going to do? Go into your church, churchianity, and talk about these things? You can't go into. It. They're going to laugh you out into the part. Well, they might not laugh, but they're probably going to. They'll probably come after you, you know, with their hands out to pray for you to cast the devils out of you or something because. They don't see. They don't see. All right. Praise God. Let's go ahead and do this news. Praise Jesus. All right. Deutsche Bank, which, by the way, is like a really, really big mega bank, confiscates 20 tons of Venezuelan gold, according to reports. Uh, this is very noteworthy. And by the way, just so you know, if you were to do some investigative research on this particular dynamic, there are some very unnerving well they're not unnerving like I, like I didn't finish saying earlier to those of us who have taken multiple red pills over the years and we know the things that are going to be happening and the order of events of the Bible and we have not been duped by the pre-trib rapture folks okay like I was for like the, the vast majority of my life um, uh, the um, uh, to those of us see the, the apocalyptic stuff is good news. It's good news. You know, when we read the Olivet Discourse, when we see signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, seas roaring, look up, look up because your redemption draws nigh. You know, it makes me wonder, what are we looking up at? Is it Planet X? Is it the sign of the Son of Man, like Douglas Elwell says? Hmm? What is it we're supposed to be looking up at? A lot of people, you know, they just default. Well, Jesus is going to come on the clouds, and we're going to be looking at Jesus. And all. No, it's something else, man. There's something else. I just know it. I just don't know what it is for sure, but it might be Planet X. If Douglas Elwell is right in his book, I think he is. Man, we live in exciting times. Folks, think about it. Any of these things, any of these things that, that we are awake and aware about, you know, the coming of the wars, the escalation of the wars across the world, the escalation of these strange, deadly hemorrhagic fevers from the bowels of Sheol, the crevasses. Folks, folks, the scientists are absolutely befuddled. The Arctic is melting away. There's, there's literally – it's melting like from the bottom. This is stuff that has never – the permafrost is going away, and, and this is serious stuff. The things that are happening there, – there, I even saw one article this week that said uh, – now, of course, I think this is ridiculous because I'm pretty sure he's a shape-shifting, blood-drinking, baby-killing uh, Satanist without a doubt, uh, especially because of the, the reports that have come out about the guy. But there was, there was actually a, um, a, a, um, um, uh, a, an article that came out that said, we owe Al Gore an apology. I'm like, no, he, 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 no, no, because you know what? It ain't global warming. It is not cow farts. It has nothing to do with any of that stuff. It is planet X. That is the problem. It has nothing to do. Look, it, that it, it's so simple. It's so straightforward. Why is it? Why is it that the world community of people who should know better and have a little bit of smarts don't study the, the ancient historical writings and understand these things? They should be people should be aware of it. I suspect there's a lot more in the scientific and astro and theoretical astrophysics community out there that are aware of it, but are keeping their mouths shut. You know, when Professor Harrington of the United States Naval Observatory back in, I think it was like 93 or 94, the head guy for the United States Naval Observatory, one of the most prestigious jobs in the entire world regarding astronomy. 
When he came forward and he told, uh, you know, when he made an official announcement that he was going to sell, uh, you know, uh, uh, he was going to retire, grab his uh, uh, telescope and go down to Antarctica, uh, uh, to the Antarctic and set the telescope up because he knew that Planet X was going to be approaching from the southern side of the ecliptic plane. And he ends up dying in like like 90 days or something from some strange fast acting cancer. He killed people. Charlie Frost in the movie 2012 had it right. Uh, and Steve Quill's got it right, too, with all the you know, dead scientists and all that kind of stuff that he has posted on his website, too. He's right about that. They kill people. Uh, and uh, and uh, actually, when you really think about it, they, they don't kill quite as many as you would almost kind of imagine that they would, because there's a lot of people out there letting the cat out of the bag. But anyway, it's all has to do with the balance, the electromagnetic plasma universe balance of the uh, of the heliosphere in the in our solar system. It, it, when you take, you know, when you were in ninth grade science class and they put iron filings on the top of a piece of cardboard and you had to take a magnet and you moved it around and it dorked everything up and you went, oh, wow, isn't that neat? Now imagine the balance of the solar system floating in the midst of this plasma electromagnetic field, and then you mess up that electromagnetic field. The planets, uh, the planets no longer move in the same way. They they have elliptical orbits instead of normal, completely circular. I mean, folks, these things are not. You know, it's really fascinating. If you go back and we watch that movie 2012, and you listen really carefully to the cartoons that Charlie Frost plays. And they're even out on YouTube. Just type Charlie Frost 2012 and you can watch them with Woody Harrelson. What's fascinating is that all the stuff that he has in those cartoons, it's true. I mean, it's really true. But those of us who have taken our red pills, uh, we we definitely know that uh, you know these things are true and that they hide this these things in plain sight praise god thank you jesus Freaky. <laughs> all right i found this headline to be most interesting uh, trump says that there is quote always a chance of war with iran so um, I, I just find it fascinating because it seems like not three or four days can go by without, uh, you know, Trump uh, and not just Trump. I mean, don't even get me going. The whole bunch of them, Bolton and Pompeo, the, all of these guys, they're come, they're pretty much coming right out and saying it like it is. I wonder to myself if we have come to that point. We know from the testimony of General Wesley Clark way back in the early 2000s that they've been planning on taking Iran out. It's been on their list of seven countries that they wanted to topple and take over uh, you know, in five years of time. And some of them have already been – it's already a done deal. So I don't know. But I will say this. It's getting very interesting, and we are literally one Kent – State bullet away from all hell breaking loose. I don't think we're going to see it coming. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Next up. Trump calls Iran, quote, terrorist nation number one and does not rule out the military option. The statement comes amidst ongoing tensions between Washington and Tehran, which escalated on May 8th when the Islamic Republic suspended its participation in the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. The move was followed by the United States uh, sending uh, an aircraft strike group, Patri Patriot interceptors and B-52 nuclear capable bombers over to the Middle East. Anybody remember Operation Desert Storm? <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, the similarities are really noteworthy. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. CNN, Putin, and G show a unified front against Trump in P in St. Petersburg. I mean, they're just they're just eating Krispy Kreme donuts and slapping each other on the back and having a good old time. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey. 
that's kind of biblical when you think about it. Praise Jesus, hallelujah. See, again, when you take the red pills, this is all good news because it means we're leaving soon. And I don't know if there's anybody that wants to be here. If there's anybody listening to this show that wants to actually be on this alien demon infested rock, I'm like, are you kidding me? What could possibly be on this planet that you want to be here for? I don't get it. I, I, I think people need to spend more time reading books about heaven uh, uh, and, um, and, uh, and listening to testimonies of people who were taken to heaven. So we, got, so we get our, our, our ducks in a row. We need to get our perspective in order. Praise Jesus. Vandal smash windows, spray paint, anti-Christian messages on walls of German churches. By the way. The um, persecution of Christians and anti-Christian messages and anti-Christian confrontations are now on a noteworthy rise here in the United States of Babylon the Great. I was just having this conversation with somebody offline. And a couple of months ago, one of the points I made was, well, we need to see the persecution of the church ramp up substantially in Babylon the Great. Okay, these because because, again, the Olivet Discourse was the scope of the Olivet Discourse is global. It doesn't leave out Babylon the Great. OK, and we're starting to see these things happening. I mean, don't forget all the churches, all those Baptists. I think it was Baptist churches that were burned. That was that was, you know, all that was intentional. I mean, uh, I, I don't even want to repeat all the awful, terrible things that have happened because it's really bad. It's tear jerking. It's horrible. But I, it's going to get a lot, a lot, a lot worse. They actually spray painted Hail Satan and Jesus sucks on this doggone, with a swastika no less, on this church, on the walls. Can you believe that? Oh, folks, we're heading into some really, really, you know, dark times. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. But you know what? They're going to be glorious times for us because we're leaving. Strong eruptions at Mexico's Papacatapetl, 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 Papacatapetl. And you know what? They are. They're seriously super. 32,000 feet. The volcanic ash is rising into the, into the uh, miles and miles into the sky. The question is, when does the full-blown eruption occur in such a way that Mexico City is devastated? That's the warning. That's the early warning sign that things are going to get real bad real fast. And by the way, that's only one of many really excellent warning signs that our Heavenly Father has given us through his servants uh, and, and watchmen across the world. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I praise God. For every one of the prophecies, dreams, and visions that I saved prior to 2016 when the seducing spirits were released upon the earth and the riptide of Trumpianity. Sadly, uh, uh, knocked a lot of people off their game, if they even had a game. Praise God. Israeli airstrike in Syria for a second day in a row. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. On Sunday night, Israeli Air Force allegedly carried out airstrikes against the T-4 air base in central Syria. Syria media reported that two people were killed in the airstrike, uh, uh, in the airstrike and two more were injured. All right. So, again, we're seeing what appears to be deadly airstrikes almost on a daily or every other daily basis from Israel into Syria. So the question is, how long before something big happens in retaliation? We don't know. All right, praise God. Listen to this. Cutting off oil supplies to China is equal to a declaration of war. According to this article, as the United States-China trade war continues to escalate, Beijing and its energy giants appear to be bracing for a worst-case scenario where uh, the uh, spat would drag on for years, possibly resulting in Chinese foreign oil uh, uh, supplies uh, being stifled. Now, um, and don't even get me going on the rare earth materials. I I don't know if they're going to pull the plug on rare earth shipments to the United States, but if they do that, well, 
stuff's going to get ugly on a scale. It's uh, it's just the the United States war machine cannot operate without rare earth uh, materials. Praise God. So we'll just have to wait and see how that all progresses. And I would not be surprised. What is it with this country that we have got that we're like actively proactively, you know, Ah, it's just amazing. We've we essentially the United States of America has pissed off pretty much just about every country in the world right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's hardly one out there that I mean it's just just absolutely amazing. And everybody's like, ah, oh, it's all it's cool. There was an article I just read. Uh, uh, I think it was yesterday, uh, where where the uh, stock market experts were saying that they anticipate all gains. All stock market gains realized during the Trump administration, their, their, their prediction is they will be lost. All of them. I think you're right. Now, of course, if, you know, all heck breaks loose, uh, you know, and, uh, and all that, well, then, uh, well, then we'll, we'll be jettisoned into the third seal, and it'll be a global financial collapse, and none of it's really going to matter at that point anyway. I suspect that'll be the, the point in time when Jesus said, when no man can work. It's going to get dark, and it's going to get dark fast. Listen to this headline, global recession. Within less than a year, if Trump escalates trade war, according to, get this, Morgan Stanley. So, again, what we're seeing now are reputable expert financial services companies looking at the things that are happening and saying, we're dorked. If this keeps up, if this doesn't get put to a stop immediately, it's going to be game over. I've never seen anything like this before. I've seen a lot of predictions from a lot of pundits out there, you know, claiming financial collapse, financial collapse. I've been hearing it for a decade, actually 15 years. Uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, oh, 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 I could, you know, the, the Trends Institute, one after another, coming right out and saying, oh, this is it. We're, you know, and nothing happened. But the things are different now. Things are very different now. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Bomb calls prompt searches at Moscow Cathedral, Mausoleum, and Ostenkino TV Tower. So, again, uh, just all kinds of, you know, wars, rumors of wars. Listen to this. Iran's Zarif calls for the elimination of the United States dollar to stop U.S. economic terrorism. Wall Street Journal reports massive crowds take to the streets in a last fight for Hong Kong. Hong Kong. I mean, we're talking about. It looks – I don't know what the exact number was, but I think I saw the word million. Uh, there are – you should see this. This is amazing. Um, uh, these people are protesting in the street. There isn't room for anybody to stand. Uh, praise God. So, again, uh, now you've got – so it's hard to paint the picture with the magnitude of the situation. It, it's really hard to capture – how big this is because it's so global. It's all over the place. Indonesia, China, Taiwan. Um, you know, you pretty much pick whatever continent you want to, and there are countries that are protesting. And uh, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anyway, uh, next up. Sudan protest. Here you go. Sud- Sudan. Sudan protesters start nationwide civil disobedience campaign. So again, here you got it. it says Sudan's main protest group has started a nationwide civil disobedience campaign and said it would run until the country's ruling generals transfer power to a civilian government. Like that's going to happen anytime soon. Another headline: multiple drone attacks in Saudi Arabia at their G's at the Jizan Airport. J I Z A N. They're getting attacked by drones. I mean, there's it, – it, uh, uh, wow. Okay, listen to this. Uh, listen to this headline. This is amazing. We're in the – I'm reading the headline. Quote, we're in an age of apocalypse anxiety and will never stop worrying about doomsday. And it goes on to say, not so long ago, most people in the West thought the world would end on Judgment Day after the dead rose from their graves and joined Jesus on a journey into heaven. And now, of course, that seems unlikely because we are absolutely sure doomsday will come when climate change melts the ice caps. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. And then it goes on. It talks about nuclear war and this and the other thing. And, and you know what? It's true. Has anybody, has anybody watched 
does anybody out there have like Netflix and Amazon Prime? You know, are you able to see the streaming movies that are out there? I haven't actually done a tally, but to the best of my off-the-cuff estimation, I would submit there's probably a ratio of five to eight, maybe eight to one uh, for – it's just amazing. It's amazing the ratio of apocalyptic movies that's out there. You know, why do you suppose that is? Are they front-loading the population? Hmm? Is this front-loading? Just like the whole, you know, deal with the alien invasions and stuff? And I think it is. I think they know it's coming. I think they know that we're on the very edge. I just, I, I just don't, none of us know when they're going to pull the trigger. All right, listen to this. Russia starts sending S-400 miss- missile systems to Turkey in two months and has already trained their crews. And by the way, naturally, Donald Trump is threatening them with sanctions and all kinds of, you know, financial evil, uh, you know, because how dare you buy missiles from anybody but us kind of thing. Oh, my God. Okay, fine, whatever. Praise Jesus, hallelujah. Listen to this. Deadly serious near misses between the United States and Russian ships. No accident and no joke. And, of course, the United States is saying, it was Russia who did it to us. It was Russia who did it to us. They, 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 they brought their ship to close eyes. And Russia is saying, no, it was not. It was you. You changed course, you bunch of NASA monkeys. And, 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 and it's back and forth and back and forth. And who do you believe? Round and round and round she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. And we just, well, we're, we're, we're just simply never going to know. Well, we won't. And you know, but anyway, praise Jesus, hallelujah. And and oh, don't even get me going on the on the on the on the Russian bombers, uh, you know, the jets, uh, you know, and the, the reversions and all the things that are happening. It is unbelievable. We are on a war footing on a global level like I have never seen in all of my life. It is unbelievable. And then when you combine it with all the tr- the, the planet X weirdness and all the strange things that are going on across the world, I mean, weird stuff, folks. Weird, weird stuff. Stuff is so weird. I can't even explain it if I was to put it in the news uh, in, in the news lineup. Praise Jesus. Listen to this. This, this is a headline. This will not go well. YouTube cracks down on pundits and journalists after a new policy change. So what's happening now is uh, it's not just YouTube. It's YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Even Donald Trump tweeted just recently, and it was like yesterday or something like this. He was admonishing Twitter and saying, haven't you ever heard of free press? <laughs> Trump. Now, you know, here's the irony. The very guy who coined the phrase fake news, which, by the way, is now being used by the whole world uh, anytime somebody doesn't want to believe anything. Oh, I don't want to. That's fake news. That's fake news. Oh, there was a uh, no, that's fake news. So now so now we have this new phrase that we can use anytime we want to to just basically put an end to the discussion. Fake news. It's just unbelievable. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. So uh, and on that note, let's go into um, I see we're running short on time, uh, but let's go into the as in the days of Noah. Uh, Praise Jesus. Here we go. DC Pride Parade ends in panic stampede after reports of gunfire. And then later the report, the, the police came out and said there wasn't any gun, gunfire. So somebody probably dropped a couple of firecrackers or whatever, but it caused panic and people were running for their lives and all that kind of stuff. Which, by the way, it's just th- – these are the kinds of things. The, the, it's, it's a type of – here. it's a type of terror really when you think about it because people are so freaked. And uh, and of course it happens during one of these you know elemental PQRST events. The the forces of darkness are egging on the inevitable. Praise God. Listen to this. Scientists now believe black holes could be portals to other galaxies. I kid you not. I kid you not. And so they're actually there's uh, I'm not going to get into all the scientific papers and the studies that they're doing right now, but they're actually the 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 um, the um, uh, um, astrophysicists are actually postulating at this time that they could be portals into other galaxies, which, by the way. Could very well be true. We know there are multiple galaxies out there. 
full of life. Cool stuff. Praise God. Father, you are so awesome. Listen to this. Nick Pope, he's a, a relatively well-known UFOologist and shows up frequently on Ancient Aliens. And he says, UFOs have now gone mainstream. And it says a former UFO investigator for the Ministry of Defense argues that UFOs are no longer a fringe topic. And that, you know, and he goes on and calls this and calls that and aerospace command and identif- the, the threat identification program, AATIP, and the Pentagon's own research files that have been released and he's right he's right this is like you know people are just kind of like you know yep all right praise god i mean you got to be into some kind of weird denial to not realize i mean but you know a lot of people are i mean can you imagine if there are still people out there that don't realize 9-11 was an inside job that those buildings were blown up <laughs> it's, it's, it's Stupend! It's unbelievable. You know when when I hear when I hear a, a Christian speak, and they mention nine eleven, especially if they're really well known, and then I realize they don't even they have no clue what actually happened with all the data that's out there. I, I immediately I, it's not that I don't love them in Christ, but I immediately lose respect for whatever they have to say because there's just no that that is that is that's like ignorance on a level that I would refer to as negligence. But that's just me. I'm wacky like that. All right, praise God. BBC News, Birmingham, Birmingham, LGBT row. So they have protesters fighting in the streets over LGBT element of P-ism. It's just what we want, right? A mysterious flash of blue light in Dallas skies uh, coincides with power surge, but no transformer explosions. And, and, and they actually have footage of these weird an- anomalous events. Uh, and uh, it, it, it reminds me of 2011. There was a lot of weird, strange uh, you know, things happening in 2011. And it's like all that stuff is ramping back up again. Gangbusters. Listen to this headline. Satanic uh, Temple says Supreme Court ruling on burial, cremation of aborted babies violates its religious beliefs. See, folks, the things are going to we have. We, this is the tip of the iceberg. The darkness that, that we're starting to see rise up right now. It, we, 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 well, you know. You ain't seen nothing yet, if you know what I mean. Praise God. It's going to get way worse. Listen to this. USA Today. He was coming right at me. An alligator encounter. Uh, alligator encounters are on a rise in Florida. Oh, no. Uh, what am I going to do? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Over 537 children test positive for HIV in a in one single small Pakistani village. 537. Listen to this. Atlanta Church hires psychic medium to minister to the congregation. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, Rome opens up exorcism courses to all major Christian faces to fight the rising demonic forces. According to this article, do you believe that the forces of darkness are rising? I know it is a fact. Major floods hit Libya. Severe damage reported. Four people killed. uh, 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 2,500 people displaced. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Signs in the sun and the moon and the stars seas roaring. West Coast faces heat wave this week as wildfires rage. And boy, oh boy, we're going to have, oh, I hate to think about this, folks, but if you think last year was horrible with paradise and all the things that happened out in the West Coast, oh, folks, I think it's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, way, way, way worse this year than it was last year. <laughs> Another headline, the United States suffered the second wettest May ever recorded uh, with the wettest 12-month period in, with some cities suffering almost double the yearly average in rain. Another headline, heat stroke kills monkey in, monkeys in India. They're dropping dead. Monkeys are dropping dead in India because of how hot it is. Another one, did we reach a solar minimum? The spotless surface of the sun suggests that we may be reaching the solar minimum of all time. And folks, a sun without sunspots is like not good. It's really super duper not good. Something is very, very wrong with the sun. Watch out. 
Southern California earthquake swarms. Oh, by the way, when the sun's all dorked up, guess what happens? Earthquakes go on the rise. It's all related. Neutrinos, uh, uh, the, um, the heliosphere, the electromagnetic magnetic, uh, plasma universe interplay between rogue planets. All the things that were warned about in the documentaries regarding rogue planets are happening now. The core of the Earth slows down. When the core of the Earth slows down, the, co- the magma in the center of the Earth heats up. And guess what happens? Volcanoes pop off everywhere. Earthquakes. Gigantic crevasses swallow up cities and towns like they are in Africa in some places. Sinkholes. Why do you think it says in Acts, Acts, uh, 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 Acts 2.21, I believe it is, it says, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke, and signs from the earth beneath. See, it, 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 believe me, when you become a literalist, when you're reading the Bible, and you take things literal, and you stop playing the metaphor game, the Bible jumps off the page and you see the empirical realities occurring all across the earth. Listen to this headline. Extinct volcano may have woken up and could trigger a catastrophic eruption at any moment. This is a really, really big one in in Russia. Extinct ones are waking up. Why? Because the Earth's core is slowing down. Why? Because the Earth's magnetosphere is dorked up. Why? Because the heliosphere of the sun is all dorked up. Why? Because of rogue planets. That is how it works. This is not complicated. If somebody with as small a peanut brain as mine can figure this out, and, and, and then why in the world would you have all of this, all of this information written in ancient, in ancient uh, 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 books like the Mahabharata, uh, you know, the, the, the Indian Sanskrit, the ancient Chinese writings? They all talked about it, but yet we treat it like it's some kind of mythos when we should be treating it as a warning and mapping it back to the Holy Bible. But we're not, are we? Most, most people aren't. Some of us are. And then, and I praise Jesus because you know what? At least a few of us have our red pills. I want to make sure I take at least two red pills a day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. And on that note, let's go ahead and bring on Brother Zen and, uh, and Sister Joy Jeffries, Dr. Dr. and Sister Joy Jeffries Pew. Pew. Praise Jesus. Let's, here we go. Dr. Joy, are you there? Yes. Oh, awesome. Let me see if this is Zen right here. Let me try this other line here. Zen, are you there? Okay, that might not be Zen. All right, now, um, I don't think that line there would be Zen. Uh, I can check my phone. He almost always dials in with Skype. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, But... I'm not seeing a Skype connection. Hold on just a second. I'm double checking my P's and Q's just in case. There we go. No, no, I don't see it. Well, doggone it. I don't see. I don't see Zen. I don't see a Skype call on here. Um. Hey, Mary Lee is um. Do you see, is Brother Zen, did he show up in the chat room? Sometimes he shows up in the chat room. Brother Zen, are you there? This is very unusual. He never misses calling into a radio show. Um, Yeah, he uh, does. Scrolling down through all these numbers here. Let Let me try giving him a quick call and see... What's happening here? Let me give this. Let me give this a try. One ringy dingy. Two ringy dingies. Three ringy dingies. <laughs> Praise God. 
Hmm. That's a little scary. I'm logging in now. Oh, okay. We'll see you when you get on there. God bless you. Yay. All righty. All right, cool. So there we go. Mystery solved. (laughs) How are you doing, Joy? Thank goodness. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Just rushing around, doing good stuff, you know? Trying to help yeah, people yeah. get the idea that the day is at hand here. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, for those of us who are kind of shored up in our homes, you know, and or we're retired or whatever the case may be and we don't get out much, the you know, the apocalyptic red pill, uh, it, it, you know, it's just like, Shazam! It's like pow! It's like right in your face, and you can't you can't get away from yeah. it. It's everywhere. Uh, but then yeah. every once in a while, I you have to travel to a client site and get out, you know, get on a plane and go right. to some other city, and and it's just like it's so like business as usual. It's like everything is just fine. It's like nobody is aware of the stuff that's going on out there. I know it's almost like they're blind, which is really scary. Very scary to me that they're not picking up on it, and it makes me wonder about severed, you know, the the ability to see that you just your mind has just been seared some way that you can't see it. That you literally are that blind, you can't see it. Yeah, it it's um. I get emails all the time from people. They're just so frustrated. They can't. They're just like, why can't anybody see this? And the, and and you know. And then of course it makes us like all feel like we're from the island of misfit toys because you know we don't have anybody to share it with or talk talk about it with. You know, so we're kind of almost like isolated in our you know what we're seeing. You know, it, because it becomes it, it's kind of a burden. You know, I was saying that earlier on the show, and it's, in a sense, it's like a double edged sword because once you are awake. And you see what's going on, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a heavy burden to carry with you. I think it is. I think it's probably the, the biggest thing that I have to deal with is that I really do care about people's souls. And when you're trying yeah. to explain to them that this is all biblically you know, connected and you start trying to talk to them about it, they'll go, oh, no, well, people have been talking about end of times forever. Don't, you know, don't worry yourself with it. Nobody knows the date. And I'm like, yes, but it tells us we'll know the season. I mean, my gosh, if you read the book of Revelation, this has got to be the season because everything has got a check mark by. If you just go down through it, it's like you can check it all off. Well, the season has got to be coming around the bend if everything that says it's going to happen is going to happen and you've got a check mark by it. I'm, I'm like, I don't know whether people are just afraid and they don't want to think about an end of days. I think some people get a little frantic about that. I think they think, well, as long as it's just kind of rolling along like it is, I'm, I'm, I'm surviving and anything different, I don't know what it's going to be like, so therefore I don't want to deal with it or think about it or worry about it or whatever. They're so busy trying to, most of the time, keep the heads above water and, and be able to work and make, you know, make a living, look after the kids and that kind of stuff. And they're so caught up in all what this technology that we've gotten now, they get so caught up in it um, they're not even thinking. And, and I, I've seen technology do this before because it, it did that when I started using a calculator years ago. My grandmother could add up anything she wanted to in her head and be in a store somewhere, and she'd have it figured out before I could sit there and just kind of keep thinking, how much is this going to cost me? It's when you start using technology to get away from you doing it yourself. It's like using spell checks. You'll forget how to spell a word. You'll go, I know how to spell that word, but because you get spell check do it so long, you forget about it. So I think that the technology is actually making us dumber and that's scary. It's really making people dumber. And they're not looking around, John. They're not looking around. They're not looking you know, it's at the opposite for me. You know, for you know, I, I, I we had a guest on the program. I see, I think Zen just connected. Let me just see if this is any Zen, is that you? It is. I apologize. Yay. Yay! No, I was just, do just, well, doing great, man. Um, j- just to finish the thought. You know, I, you know, I put. You know, somebody, somebody had come on the show and they were like, you know, we need to get rid of our cell phones. We need to spend more time with the Lord. This is distracting us from, you know, and and I, and I do. I'm a real big proponent, and 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 preach constantly about spending more time with the Lord and and prayer and confession of our sins and and just drawing in closer in holiness and righteousness. But but on the flip side of that, you know, my phone, I put like all, I love 
apocalyptic alerts. I got alerts for everything. I got alerts for tsunamis, volcanoes. I, I, yeah, I even have a volcano. Yeah, you know what I mean? Well, it's like when Papa Cotta Petal blows up, I get, my phone goes like, broop, broop, broop. Of course, I got to watch out one of my client sites because they'll like escort me to the door and say, don't come back. But, <laughs> you know, but, you know mm. and kind of goes with the territory, but right? I- well, when you when you study this and you've got the technology and that you're watching it and you're tracking it, that's an advantage. But if you're using it for uh, Facebooking and doing this and whatever without using it for understanding end of day things, you're not even hearing about this. You're so caught up in who's doing what, who's going on vacation, who's doing this, and then everybody's sitting at a table eating and everybody's looking at all these different things and nobody's even saying, hey, did you hear about this on the news? We're talking about that we've never had a flood like this out in the Midwest. And did you hear about the temperatures that happened down in the south and how that's totally broken all these records? If you're not bringing that stuff up, you don't see it. If I didn't have people on my Facebook, you know, as friends like yourself and other people, um, we, we're the only ones discussing it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else is so caught up in their cats and their dogs and their, <laughs> and their cars well, and plus, their babies and what, you know, and that, and and that keeps technology keeping you busy. Well, plus with Trumpianity, um, I've had conversations with people, and I'm, I'm going to shut up here, and I want, I'm going to get Zen, Zen and you guys going, but, um, but just in closing, in a closing thought, um, I've had conversations with people that used to have, you know, they, they focused on, um, you know, the, the end times events that are happening around the world. It, they had several Facebook pages that were set up for specific topics like signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, earthquakes and diverse places, you know, all that kind of stuff. And they, and uh, one of the name ladies' names, her name is Susan. And she, she came on the show and she said that they were getting like, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of hits every single day back before Trumpianity. And then after Trump got hired and all these evangelical Christians came out and started saying that, you know, stuff they shouldn't ought to be saying, uh, everybody just kind of went back to business as usual. They were kind of like, you know, oh, okay, well, obviously there there is no apocalypse. Nothing's going to happen. God loves us. Uh, you know, I've even seen people say things like Jesus has married America and everything is just fine now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Jesus loves America. I'm like, do you have the same Bible as I have? Because that's right. my Bible everything doesn't is not gonna be <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> you know. Anyway, I'm gonna be quiet and let you, let Zen jump in there. Hey Zen, how you doing, man? Long time, long time no talk to. Yeah, uh, always good to be with both of you. And uh, I think you know, really, the the people are so complacent in their comfort, and because they yeah. haven't had to struggle. You know, the Bible talks about the Laodicean church, and because people are just caught up in entertainment and distraction and uh, propaganda and, you know, who's marrying who as far as what celebrity is hooking up with whatever celebrity and whatever's going on in Hollywood and all that dominates the headlines and the real news and those things that are connected to the unfolding of the end times and that are harbingers to really you know, as far as the watchmen, we see and we understand what's coming down the line, but most everybody else is just lost in delusion, caught up in the matrix, and um, and because of that, they can't recognize the signs of the season. It's really sad. It's just really sad. I mean, it, like I mentioned earlier, it just breaks my heart to be able to to know that we've got scripture that is really, really boldly telling us that the days in which we are living are going to be as such as, as what we're seeing. Uh, and it's been so put back on the back burner um, over and over again that, well, things have continued, it's continuing on, nothing has happened so far. But what people don't see when they do that is that for people like us, that do this research every day, you know, it's like I right. said, we've always had earthquakes. We've always had, uh, you know, strong storms. We always had these things, but they were very far and few between them. 
you know, if you had a major earthquake, it might be something that was a major earthquake and it was just one over here every now and then. But now you can go to Google Maps, and that's the same thing I do like John. It shows up all these, you know, in the last 24 hours, how many earthquakes have hit everywhere. Uh, and, and so you can see that they're becoming more frequent and, and more uh, intense. And then when you look right. at uh, adding all the other things, like the, the plagues and the pestilences and uh, the flooding and the fires and the temperatures and the strange things with the sun, moon, and stars and the UFO phenomenon, and you've got, you know, the, the Pope telling everybody you just get up under one little umbrella and we all worship a God by, you know, different names, but it's the same God. You, you just have to go, whoa. And, and I'm like you in that when End Times talks about the Laodicea in church, you know, we really are there because the majority of churches, right. and it's a very unfortunate thing because I am a very dedicated Christian and I try to be in church, you know, sometimes. I have gone to church to two different churches on the same night. You know, they one started one, and I went to, to another one to hear somebody else to speak. So it's not unusual for me to spend, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night, you know, in churches. And then sometimes, like I say, I've actually done two churches on one night. So it's, it's that it's given me an opportunity to travel around and look at different churches and see, you know, is this church particularly trying to maintain status quo are they losing members or what's the you know pastor is he politically correct is he not politically correct what 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 are we dealing with uh in in churches and what i'm seeing is is the people who typically do the true nature of um the gospel and they stay true to it but they haven't expanded to the programs that entice people to come for example, let's play this afternoon and let's have a movie or let's have somebody have a singing crew or let's make our stage instead of having a choir. We're going to have a stage now and we don't need an altar. We don't really need anybody to come down here and pray. And, we, and we're going to do a production and we're going to do it in the dark. We're going to have lights and people are going to be dancing. And then when we get ready to leave, we just say, okay, a prayer, goodbye. There's no condemnation there's no seeking for salvation there's no can i pray for you can we come down can we anoint with you with oil if you need to have special healing that's going away then it's typically right. going away and, right. and it breaks my heart because the bigger churches you've seen it start happening much quicker the smaller churches have been the ones that are losing members and they don't have any young people coming in because the the bigger venues are going to the more the praise and worship and I and you know I like praise and worship music but it's repetitious music where it's just over and over for 30 minutes I mean I've been to churches where poor old people they can't stand there for 30 minutes screaming at the uh -huh. top of their lungs reading uh, a billboard that's got you know the, the verses on there I mean you don't even know how the song goes if you've never heard it you don't have music in front of you to be able to tell where the notes are going so you know they get tired, they sit down, they're not participating. Um, and, and that's really a, a, a concern for, for me in that you are separating out really what was the Philadelphia church. And when I say Philadelphia church, I'm talking about those very committed, um, you know, hellfire and brimstone preachers uh, that really believed in the, the fruit of the Spirit and the anointing of the Spirit and that the Holy Spirit was present within uh, a church and now you're going to oh it's a social club we're having fun we're going to have this we're going to have that it's entertainment you right. know it's like i said many times if if it was left up like it was in jesus's day where a man just goes out on a hillside i'm wondering how many people would go out and sit on a hill and listen to jesus today i don't think very many would because right. they're so used to I want my cell phone. I want to get out of here by 12 noon. I've got to get down to get my food because this afternoon I've got to run and go take the kids to do this. I mean, it's it's a whole different social thing. Instead of it being, you know, we're going to go into the church. Yes, we can sing some songs. But the the main reason we are there is to hear the gospel that's being preached. And it's being preached as, as a hellfire and brimstone kind of thing. In other words, I realize that, you know, the Pope is really confusing people by making them think that, oh, God is a living God. 
you know, you can do whatever you want to. There's no need for condemnation. Uh-huh. There's no need for you to have to be saved or whatever. He's just going to, he's a, he's a good God. He's a loving God. You know what I'm saying? They keep doing that over and over. And when what happens is that the persons never feel that they need to be saved or that they right. need to seek that salvation. So right. there is a really big step from the time when, when I was a child and, and, and have a Philadelphia-type church and still trying to find a Philadelphia-type church to really go to. It's very difficult, even in small South Georgia towns. Um, it, there's just been this inundation. We've got to get bigger. We've got to do bigger things. We've got to do all this kind of stuff. And it's away from it's re, it's real it's kind of ritualistic. And some of the connections, like to the Presbyterian Church and the Methodist churches, it falls back that they are connected to the Roman Catholic Church. And mm-hmm. so when they go in, they're it's repeating cool. stuff, and it's repetitious. You know, right. it's, it's things that they're not thinking about. They're doing. Right. They're doing like doctrines of men and and rituals of man, and they're getting away from just a man standing up there and preaching the gospel and and really being filled with what I call the Holy Ghost. They're too busy with uh you know their computers in front of them. They took ten hours to write out the the uh, the sermon. I mean, some of the best sermons that I've ever heard were people who you know they said, "Brother so and so, I see you come to church tonight," and and uh. You know, you didn't have church tonight at your church. Would you like to get up in the pulpit and, and preach? Just instantaneous, spontaneous preaching where the Holy Ghost really has to use that person to really deliver a message. And you can really tell, you know, if I'm going to teach something, yes, I go in and I have my, you know, little pinpoint stuff and I've got this, that, and the other. But if you're really wanting to preach a message, you don't really need all that. Because the Holy Spirit right. should be able to come through you and deliver to whatever those people that are listening to you. If you're close to God, he will deliver like that. So yes. what we're seeing is that Laodicea in church, in that, in that it's a mixed church. It was a lukewarm church. It was politically correct. It didn't you know, rock anybody's world. And, and then going back to the Philadelphia church, it was like, well, you know, Jesus does love everybody. And he did come as a suffering servant. And upon the cross to die for our sins. But what they don't read is the book of Revelation where he comes back. He is a God of judgment. And if you go back and look at Genesis and Leviticus, I'm, I, you know, Leviticus of all the books and the Bible, then if I was living under the law like those people had to live under the law, I mean, I wouldn't make it. Because there, it right. they got something oh, for Who everybody. would, really? They got, right. they got something. So thank goodness for the grace that was given us and the cross to be able to ask forgiveness for a sin instead of going, oh, man, you did wrong, stone you to death. Or you did wrong and you're dead. I'm going to open up the earth and swallow you up. They didn't have right. a chance of redemption and grace and asking for forgiveness that we have been given by the fact that Jesus came down from the cross and, and gave us that. So it does concern me to look at at churches because I am a Christian. It is important to me to be in church, and it breaks my heart. When I have been in services, and the guy stands up to preach, and he gets through, and there he's held your attention for 30 minutes, and he doesn't even ask for, you know, a moment of a song so that if you decide you want to, you know, seek salvation, Come to know the Lord, you know, pray, determine what you want to do about your soul. That just blows my mind that a man can just do a sermon, say a prayer, and walk out the door. I just yes, can't absolutely. hardly take that because that means there's no, nobody's been saved. Nobody has made the choice of, of heaven. And, and, you know, you and I both know being in church and stuff, you only have one chance with a person. You know, if they if they don't come back, that one chance that you had with them inside that, that building and feel in the presence of the Holy Spirit, if they don't take it, then who knows? They may never be back right. in church again. And so right. that, I, I'm like you, this lady seeing uh, age, I mean, it, it tells us that's the last church. 
so like we were talking about, if if all this stuff is lining up, we can't be that far away. And we, you and I have been watchmen on the wall for a long time, and we've been trying to point to things and seasons and what's happening. But we keep up with it like John is keeping up with it. Right. Where every day you see the magnitude of the changes. We see that. But the, yes. the majority of people are not seeing it. They're not seeing it. And that really worries me, and it burdens me. It burdens me to know that people are, will die and go to hell because they just were too busy, literally. They're too busy for God because God re- kind of requires a little bit of time, you know, a little bit of a long right. time being with him, right. talking to him, researching, studying. He requires a little bit. Of time, yeah. But Satan's made, he's made very sure that we don't have that time. That time's not there. Right. Yeah. God. God wants a relationship from us. I mean, it's personal. It's real. That's the way it should be. But you know, again, most people have no dedication for the kingdom, no consideration of it, and. Um, have no real concern for their eternity either. And so that's what that's what makes these times so challenging. And Satan has purposely established it that way. Uh it, you know, it speaks about this in the protocols that they would uh that he would make everything so difficult and then give mm-hmm. us entertainments and distractions which would keep our minds off of what is real with regard to, you know, the what we should be focused on, what sh- we should have concern with, um, and and so he knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like I mentioned earlier. It's like we're getting dumber instead of smarter right. with the technology we have in most cases. And you know, I remember as a young girl, the only type of book somebody had in their house. I mean, because if you wanted a book, you had to go by and check it out at the library. Um, the only books that was in anybody's house was usually just their Bible, you know. And so uh-huh. at night, back when I was growing up, some people didn't even have televisions. They might have radio. You might pick up a radio station. But most everything went off, you know, early. And, and you know, uh, you didn't have 20 million channels to watch and 20 million radio stations you could get a hold of. You didn't have anything but quiet. We had one right. television, uh, you know, and it was black and white, and when 11 o'clock came, it went off the air. And if you had a radio station, it was, a, it was an AM station, and it was only on usually during the daytime. At night, they, they shut it all down. So, you know, I grew up at a time when all that happened, we would have devotion. So you sat around either by candlelight or uh, a lantern or whatever, and we read scriptures. Well, you know, on the afternoon, if, he was, if it was raining or whatever, people would be sitting out on the porch. They'd have their Bibles out, and they'd be talking about the Word of God, and this, that, and the other. And the preacher, he'd be stopping by, and people down the road would be coming by, and they'd be talking about what was happening at church. And so all that now doesn't go on. I mean, right. you don't see a lot of visitations and people having time for even their families, much less the person down the road that might be sick or might be needing help or have comfort. Right. Everybody's all caught up in their own thing, and it, and it really is. It's a plan of Satan to separate uh-huh. humanity from itself so that we lose this attachment. You know, it's like we've mentioned before right. when a baby's born and you move it, remove it from the mother and it doesn't have the love, it will die. In uh-huh. other words, you are made, God is love. We were made to love one another. If you right. don't feel love, it brings about a host as a child, you know, you just die. You can't just survive without human touch. But, you know, to, today I, I learned something that was very sad at church. There's a lot of people, young people in this community and even in the world at large, they're committing suicide. And I heard a yeah. story this morning of a, a 14-year-old kid that hung himself because yeah. he didn't feel love. I heard right. another woman who lost her brother, and, and he's like 26 years old, but he just felt unloved nobody loved him yeah. you know it's, right. it's, we've taken the bibles out of the churches and by giving these new bibles with all these other kind of meetings we're not preaching 
really what God is about. And then we've taken the Bible completely out of the school system. And then in your Bible that used to be on your center table in your house, everybody who had any kind of big table had a, had a big Bible in the center of it. Those things don't exist anymore. So children are so detached from their families that they're missing the element of creation, and that is God is love and that right. we are to love. And if we don't feel that then, then depression hits. And Satan runs with that because how can I fill this void? Drugs, alcohol, pornography, homosexuality, whatever, to try to put something in its place. When the world is screaming out, I just want to be loved. You know, I just want to be loved. People are missing that point so bad. Uh, and, and that, and it really does, it really does concern me because I mean, it's 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 leading children into uh, areas that, oh my gosh, you know, being able to choose whether you want to be a boy or a girl, making those kind of decisions at that young age, nobody can make that decision at that age. You don't know anything. It's like, you know, even after I got old and the things that my mom and dad had told me. I've laughed many times, and I always go, when I get to heaven, I'm going to say, yeah, you were right. I thought I was really right. wrong, even when I was in my 30s or 40s, because it takes time to develop a knowledge of what really is and the right choices to make. You can't just jump out and make a right choice without having some kind of knowledge around it. You might hit one or two and make it right. You might do good here and there. But you're never going to be able to make great choices unless you've got the whole understanding of the, the situation. And, and one thing in particular I saw happen this past week was where a young man said he had come out of the closet on Facebook. And he literally was, you know, excited about this and that this was the greatest thing since peanut butter and he was now out of the closet and whatever. And there was like 200, 300 Thumbs up, and then maybe just as many comments about, you go, man. Yeah, that's great. Glad you're you're doing that. I'm just so proud of you. And I'm sitting there going, excuse me, do they realize that they are clapping for him choosing to spend his eternity in hell? Right, right, right. I mean, you know, that's like having a cheering section say, hey, you go, man. You're going straight to hell. We're so, we're so happy for you. We couldn't be happier for you to know that that's what you have chosen to do with your life and your soul. It'd be no, it'd be no different than somebody saying, oh, yeah, I'm having an affair. Adultery is this great thing, da-da-da-da-da. And then you get 200 people giving you a thumbs up and 200 people making comments. Great job. Good going. Glad you found your wife right. or your, I mean, found your girlfriend or your boyfriend. And, and, but they're really, even though they're saying this, great stuff to their faces, what they're really saying is, you go, guy. You're going straight to hell, and we're so happy for you. Right. I just, I literally cringe at this, because when you look at sin, it doesn't matter whether it's homosexuality, pornography, stealing, adultery, whatever. It's a sin, it's a sin, it's a sin, it's a sin. That's why Jesus said there's no big sin, there's no little sin. It's all a sin, and you need, to for, you, know, you need forgiveness from it. You need salvation from it. You need a Savior to save you so that you can get away yeah. from it and, and you know, go back to paradise like we've talked about you know, from the garden. But right. when, when you really look at it, and you go, why can't people see this? There's the scary thing. It's that it's okay to do all this stuff. It's okay for everything to be wrong. I, I you know, I, I think it's one of the saddest times that we've ever lived. We've got so much more. We've got so much more technology. We've got so much more understanding. We've got so much, you know, Better things. I mean, running water, electricity. I mean, I grew up in a time when people still used outhouses. I grew up in a time when I didn't have a telephone in my house. I grew up in a time when there's no air conditioning in my house. I grew up in a time when you, you know, you drove down the highway in a car and you had the windows rolled down. Um, you know, you rolled them down with a roller. It was not like an automatic thing. There was no seat belt. Okay. I mean, we're talking about stuff that 
that we take for granted. Now we have all this stuff. I mean, we can pick up our phone and we can talk to anybody in the world in instant time. And this right. is what happened in my lifetime to go from no phone to a phone that literally I can talk to anywhere and to anybody tonight in real time, whether in China, Australia, wherever, in, in Africa, what, wherever. I can have a conversation with them in real time right now. And that has been during my lifetime. And so instead of us being able to move forward and, and say, where we, let's say where people were back in the day when I was young, and this Christianity and this caring and love for your fellow man, instead of us being able to bring that forward and have gotten better as a society and better caring for people and whatever, now people will be too busy taking a Facebook picture of you because they want to put you on Facebook to show you, you know, something doing something stupid or either watching you die on the street and not even lending a hand. Right. And and it's not for the good of humanity. It's not anything for the good. Now, you and I use the technology and John is using the technology trying to do something that's good, but look how few there are of us that are trying to to be the watchman on the wall, pointing out the problems and letting people see how it lines up to biblical prophecy. I can't even get people to read their Bibles because they go, uh, well, uh, it's so difficult, Joy. I, I just don't understand all that. And I'm like, you've uh, got to uh. get down and study it. And if you will get in the Word, God will give you that. And, and I, I, I saw this happen in my lifetime. There was, a, there was a black man that worked on my father's farm. Wonderful, wonderful man. He, he did not know how to read, but he got saved, and he, he literally prayed fervently every day for God to give him the ability to read his Bible. And I'm going to tell you, God gave him that ability, and he could read his Bible, and he could, oh my gosh, he could deliver a prayer that would transcend, you know, the people on TV that are pastors. And he's just a little guy who could never read and just sought really God to help him do something, and he did. So, I mean, I've seen the power of God, how it works in your life when you really turn your life over to him and you really do believe and you really trust it and you apply it. When I try to tell people, go back and get those older Bibles, the reason I'm saying this is because the newer Bibles, the translations, they're having to change them to be able to get copyright on them. So they right. cannot reproduce the old King James version of the Bible because if they do, they're under copyright, you know, infringement from the original King James. So that you, anything that's not an original King James has got something changed in it, and that's the only way they can get their copyright to be able to sell their books. So it's most important, you know, to really try to look at it and, 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 and be in it so that you can get it. And there's nothing wrong with getting a commentary as long as it's a commentary that really is an old commentary to the old King James Version that might let you read it one a little bit and then go back and help study it. But you and I both know that the Bible is so majestic in itself. It's so, it's so marvelous that even the words, when you shake them down to the Hebrew letters, they have meaning. And there's no other book like that, Zen. No other book right. on this planet. Yes, and, you know, that's the, another thing you were talking about, the elder generation. And, you know, people don't read their Bibles anymore. They don't study the Word. They don't examine it in any manner. They don't understand it. And they don't know how it applies to what's going on now in this world. And so because of that, uh, they're lost. They're wayward. They're led astray. And uh, it's a sad thing, but that's the way it is. And that's one of the signs for the the last times as well, that it would be like this, that this is what we would be contending and dealing with in the end of days. And you certainly see the signs of that everywhere. You know, people don't even sit down to have meals together, you know, Dr. Joy. Uh, That's right. And and they, 
even when they do, they look at, they watch, you know, uh, their telephone. And all of them are on their phones all at one time. And it's just crazy, but that's, that's the way it is. That's what we are dealing with. That's what we contending with in this world. Well, we, li- we, we know we live in a fallen world. And I know in the research that I did in my book, um, Eden, the Knowledge of Good and Evil 666, which thank goodness is now in volume one and two because I was able to add a lot to that particular book. Um, it never failed that when I would try to look at how Satan had really manipulated history, and I don't think a lot of people understand how everything around us has got a rhyme and a reason. And because we live in a fallen world, Satan has got his particular peons and and controlled lineage in place to really dictate everything. Everything from, you know, what foods we have available, what stuff we can listen to on the radios and TVs. I mean, there is a connecting spider web to everything. And that's like this huge octopus that's got all these tentacles. And he's, he's, the, he's the evil head, and he's got his fingers in everybody's stuff. Um, and that's a scary thing because, you know, the Bible tells us we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We actually wrestle against principalities and powers in high places. Okay. That's hard for us to, to understand especially if you're a person that doesn't get that there's a spiritual realm in here with us. You know, a lot of people will say, well, um, I I don't know what I'll look like when, you know, when he passed away. And I'm like, well, my work and the research that I've done on near-death experiences, you look just like you look. I mean, you uh-huh. are in, you are in the image of God forever. And, when you leave your body and you are out away from your body, you still can look at your body and know it's still you. You still look like right. the, the the shell that you just come out of. And I, that's one way I can tell you is it's the human body is like a shell that you're living inside of as a soul and spirit. And when that comes out and you see yourself, you are literally who you are. That's why you're going to be known as who you are. You will be recognizable. You will know your family members. They will know you. And and then because we are the children of God, I think that, you know, we only utilize a certain limited amount of our brain. And because we just do that a little bit, the capability of our mind, once it becomes open and, and is, um, brought into like a heavenly capability, I think that will allow you not only to recognize your family members, but I think that you'll also be able to recognize your brothers and sisters in Christ. You will know right. this one, and you will know that one, and you will know this one, and you will know that was Moses, and you will know that was Abraham. And I think you'll be able to know those people. And And the reason... I believe that is that when you know when Jesus went up into the uh, mountains and was tra- you know and he became um, uh, caught up and, and of course his disciples were standing there watching him, you know they recognized that Moses was there with him. You know when right. when they saw that happen, but yet there was no photograph, there was no pictures, but yet they knew when they saw that, that there was Elias and Moses on either side of Jesus. And how did they know that? How did they know that? Jesus didn't say, oh, by the way, this is uh, Moses and this is Elias. They knew themselves because they wanted to know, should we make a temple to Moses? You know, should we do something right here uh, in honor of them? They knew them. So I, I believe fully that the children of God all will know each other and that yeah. the mind has the capability 
it's like I've mentioned many times in some of my researches that um, having understood the brain's capability in hypnosis, when you take a person back, that person can literally remember the daytime hour of certain things. They can tell you what color this was and what color you had on and who the person was sitting behind you in class and the whole nine yards. And then there are people who walk the earth today who can literally, you can walk up and say to them, what happened on February 14th, you know, in your lifetime in 1965? There are some people that can carry you back to the day and tell you everything that happened that day in their life just by memory. They literally uh-huh. have. It's no different than a photographic memory where, you know, I, I have a little bit of that myself where I can study something and I can tell you it was on this page with this and this and this and this. It's like I take a photograph. If I go, um, let's say I travel out of town. If I go down a certain area and I literally can come back at night and I can drive myself down through that again, I have a photographic memory for stuff like that. So I can understand how your mind has the capability to retain everything you've ever thought, done, said, whatever. Yeah. I, and, 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 and the Bible tells us that every thought and deed is going to be brought into captivity, and it's also going to be judged because it's, it's no different than um, you saying, I you know, lust after this person or I actually had a relationship with that person, the thought process sometimes can be just as wicked as the actual action. And you're thinking, well, how does how would God know that? Because your mind has programmed that in there. And the Bible says he knows every hair on your head and the numbers of hairs on your head. And I think that all goes back to the fact that when you know, I've discussed the pineal gland before and how our DNA is singing. And you have a tune and I have a tune, John has a tune, and my cats have a tune, that kind of stuff. But he knows all parts of his creation because it's all connected to him. It's like right. there is a constant wave of information that you are generating with your thoughts and you're just being. You literally are singing your song. In other words, if if I'm doing something wrong, I'm singing that song. Man, I, I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing this wrong. I know that I'm doing this wrong. But nobody else might see you do it wrong. And you might do it in a closet and think nobody sees it. But your mind and what you're doing is singing it. So I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Da-da-da-da-da. Nobody sees me. Da-da-da. That's all going right into that song that you're generating as part of your being. And if a, if a creator has that kind of capability, which a computer could do if it was connected to everybody like that, I mean, what the mind of God is, is, I mean, it's beyond our even capability of understanding, but it would tell us if we can keep up with things connected to computers on, on data within microseconds of you know, information, what is it that connects us? It's the sound, and the sound is vibration, and all this stuff is resonating, and it's absolutely singing this information to our creator. And the, the bad thing is, is when it's negative, I fully believe that, that, that Satan was um, the, you know, the number one angel. He was over everybody. But I do believe he was involved with the music and the praise of God yes, because absolutely. he was over them. And, and, and the fact that he was over them like that and everything else, then any time we are singing out of tune, he knows to come at you even more. And that's why I think he was able to determine that Job was a good man because he wasn't singing anything that was he was picking up as negative. So he was like, oh, yeah, okay, God, you got Job down here. He's a good man. The reason why he's a good man because you've just been giving, giving, giving to him. And at the moment you stop giving to him, he is going to turn his back on you, and he's not going to do what you think he would do. And, of course, we know the story that God said, okay, you can do whatever. You can't take his life. And Satan did absolutely everything really humanly possible 
to try to break that man. And he kind of did Jesus Christ the same way that, you know, when he was here. He was trying to break them so that their singing, he was over it. And, and, and you know, when we, when we fall and we sin, then he knows he's got us because he can hear it. He knows now we, you know, we're negative and this is terrible and I got to have a drink and I got to have some drugs and I got to do this and da 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 da. He's aware of that. So that makes him just go right into this worse and worse. And then, of course, if you say, okay, and you seek salvation and you get rid of that and you clean your house out, then he knows when you've kind of like gone back over to God's side. And then yeah. every time I've ever seen that happen in any case, he goes after that person hundredfold. It says, you know, right. in the Bible that he'll take se- he'll take, go back and take seven more demonic spirits with him because he wants to make it so bad for you while you're getting back or you're a young Christian or getting back in with the Lord. He's going to hit you more and more and more and more and more. So if a person is listening, let's say, to some of these prosperity preachers, oh, you're going to get your Mercedes tomorrow afternoon because you gave $10 today to my ministry, um, and, and people don't get their Mercedes after they gave their only $10 they had that they needed for food, uh, then they think, well, oh, my gosh, God doesn't love me. He did that for this pastor, or he did this for this person over here, and he doesn't care for me. Then the the mindset of bringing you down literally gives off a sound of that being a negative thing. And when I was doing the research on taking plants and putting a plant in with classical music and playing the music with classical around the plant, the plant flourished. You take another room and you put rap music in it, and you take a healthy plant and it'll kill the plant. You can take the classical plant that's beautiful and put it in the room where you had the rap music and it'll kill that it'll kill that plant because it's it's the sound, it's the vibration that affects us. And I don't think we stop and think about that we are literally singing. So if our singing is not of God and pure then I think that's where uh, we know that frequency has a way to really heal or destroy. And I think about, you know, when King David was playing his harp for King Saul, he was soothing him with the sound. And, you know, there's been a lot of people who have done research and said, you know, there's a frequency that I feel certain that if you put your body into it, that it probably would heal things like cancer and those kind of things. It's trying to find the notes. And that's one thing that the Knights Templar that I wrote about in um, my book, Eating the Knowledge of Good and Evil, they were very much into trying to establish harmonic resonance within the megalithic structures that they built all across Europe. And... Um, I had mentioned tonight that I wanted to touch on this July 28, 2019 date that I had brought up many times uh, in, in my books because it is a time when all the megalithic um, Gothic cathedrals that the Knights Templar built on old ancient oracle sites on that particular day all of their, their seven, their seven Gothic cathedrals that are set like a Lacadorium, like the North Road or like the, the Milky Way galaxy. And what these people would do, they start at the, the base, so they called it the, 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 the base chakra. And that chakra was on an oracle site that they built one of these Gothic cathedrals on. So they built seven of those Gothic cathedrals like the spine of a man, with the crown chakra being in Roslyn Chapel, there in Edinburgh, Scotland. And the the thing that really uh, was most important about this was that to get illuminated, in other words, to reach a level of intelligence using sacred geometry, which this is sacred geometry, 
they would start out on the base chakra and the base oracle site and then move through each one of those oracle sites until they got to Roslyn, which was the seventh uh, crown chakra. And the, the fact that the oracle sites that they built those Gothic cathedral, uh, cathedrals on were, were old, ancient oracle sites. And then we're talking about where right. uh, the Bible talks about the witch of Endor. I mean, she sat on an oracle site to conjure up Samuel to uh, talk to King Saul. And the Bible clearly explains that that really did occur. I mean, it's not some fake thing. It really, I mean, it really, really happened. And so these oracle sites, uh, from the research that I've done, they are typically over, you know, some what you call ground work. Ley lines. But, yeah. yeah, and they have ley lines. And ley the lines, ley yeah. lines are like electromagnetic, so they are vibrating. So you've got a, these ley lines that cross each other like dragon, they're called dragon nodes, where they, they right. form that point between the cross, the cross section. And that point, that circular point in there was an oracle site. And those are where these uh, magicians and chandlers would go, medians and that kind of stuff, would go and sit in cobra-like positions, and they would begin to manifest this electromagnetic energy into their bodies by doing this umming noise, which would open up the pineal gland. And then, the, you know, the things that would come through them and talk were literally something other than what, or who they were. So it's interesting to me that the fact that those ley lines sit over water, they are electromagnetic, they are vibrating, they have a major play on the human body, and at the same time, it's allowing a frequency to come in and out of a body that's making contact with something other than the physical realm. In other, it, in other words, it's stepping in to a spiritual realm. And um, it doesn't, you know, people will act like, oh, no, no, there's no way that can happen. The Bible's telling us it is. I mean, if you're going to believe the Bible, you've got to believe it for what it says. You can't pick and choose and pull whatever you want out of there. Everything yeah. in there is, is, the, is proven uh, word of God. There's no doubt in my mind because of the way, even when you do the le- equidistant letter sequencing and everything has got the stuff in there, if you start moving around letters and whatever, you mess up the whole context of all that. And I think that's why the Bible tells us at the end, don't you touch, you know, an eye or don't, you know, don't move nothing out of the, the Bible. Don't change it because if you do, you're in jeopardy of hellfire simply because it is a book that contains everything. And I think it was trying to explain to us Witchcraft, the reason God wanted us to stay away from it was not because it was stupid or it didn't work. He he wanted to stay away from it because it did work. And it did open up uh, the pineal gland and allow you to have these uh, issues. But when I was um, looking at these seven oracles, on these like these seven uh, cathedrals were built on, um, there was a time a couple of years ago when the belt stars of Orion matched the uh, the uh, pyramids there in uh, uh, Egypt, and um, you know as above so below, but they were identical. They, I mean, the chances of something in the sky matching what's on the ground just out of uh, uh, coincidence is not the case. Right. Those things were planted and fixed and aligned such that there would come a day when that really happened. Well, on July the 28th, 2019, every one of those seven Gothic cathedrals over there in Europe are going to perfectly align with their planetary counterparts. And each one of those oracle sites there's a sun oracle, oracle, the moon oracle, and then you've got some of the planet oracles that go down and that actually are the the um, the oracle sites for these Gothic cathedrals. But what are the odds of all seven 
of those things matching perfectly. In other words, when the sky gets to a certain point on that day, they're going to all be on matching on the ground. Now, there were some things that I had researched where they believed that this was a signal to the serpent and the serpent lineage that the time was getting close right. to the end of days. Uh, and we know that they they know that they're going to there's going to come a time when they're going to have to pay the price of what you know evil has, is going to lose out. I mean, they know that's coming. Yeah. So right. I do think that they have some understanding that when Earth gets to a certain level, things are going to start happening. It's kind of like the the Mayan prophecies of 2012. A lot of people felt like that. That yeah, you know, nothing happened. I fully I fully believe something did happen then. I think when we changed over 2000 and our computers were you know manipulated by saying they're all going to shut down. We went into a World Wide Web, which we had backdoors coming into computers that we could control people. In 2012, uh-huh. I fully believe that that prophecy about the, you know, there was starting to be these ornaments coming out of the sky. Just look at what we're looking at right now since 2012. There has been so many UFO cases that now our government is having to come out with this information because there's too many people in our military, uh, Air Force and Navy, that have seen these things. They know right. they're not crazy. They know what they saw defies uh, explanation. They know that the craft are not our craft, that they're doing things that we could not do. Now, you know, I've heard the conspiracy people say, um, well, it could be that, you know, these projects have been in the working for years and years and years in underground bunkers through black budgets. Yes, there is black budgets. And, yes, they have been working on things. But, you know, when they came out and said, well, we, we've been trying to backward engineer stuff that we found, and we have types of materials that are not of planet Earth. That you, you got to go. Okay, wake up. Um, because really, since 2012, when that Mayan prophecy was like that and was talking about these, you know, these things coming and whatever, I've always believed that was going to be an increase in, in UFO activity, and it's gradually gotten worse and worse and worse because. You know, if um, if Satan needs something to identify with as an antichrist, he's going to have to be able to bring fire down from heaven. He's going to have to be able to show his powers and whatever. He's got to make it look like he's got angels and aliens and, and whatever else on his side. So it only makes sense that all this would start happening at the same time. And I just think that this, equally with the oracles all matching the sky, that these megalithic builders a long time ago who first set up the, what they call the doldrums that were big, huge um, stones all over this planet. They're all put on these dragon lines and, and, and uh, dragon notes. They literally were, I think, transmitting. And I think that the the megalithic buildings that are built on those, all your big megalithic buildings, including your Gothic cathedrals, but I'm talking about going back and talking about the pyramids, Stonehenge, these other big buildings that are megalithic, they're also built on these same ley lines. They all follow yeah. the same path that the Chinese history books have always told us that that's the path of the dragon. And they had the oldest you know, history books in the world. So they were using this energy for something. So you, you think about the obelisk, that um, the Egyptians use, they're very pointed and they're very straight up like we have in Washington, D.C. Those stones are apparently generating something out of the ground. And, and I fully believe it's a frequency. And I think that that frequency is, is going to get more and more and more to the point that, and it may already be happening, that the people who are protected by God 
will not be affected. But the ones that have turned their backs on God, it is affecting them because they no longer have that connection to the Father. They are moving away from that connection. And so Satan with his, you know, um, human resonance, like we have Earth has human resonance, but our own little resonance, if he can encapsulate you within his resonance and you can't get through past him to get to God, I mean, that he can literally shut you down. And I think that that might really explain why you've got PhDs that can't see. It's not, it's not unintelligent people. We're talking about very intelligent people that cannot see that these end of days are upon us. And um, I, I think that, I, I just think Satan's group has always had an idea about, you know, where, where do we need to be at? They're, they've made plans. They've got their history. They've got their future plans. And I think when these Knights Templar went and built those oracle sites on those seven chakras, knowing, of the, they call them seven chakras of the earth, knowing that they could get illumination by doing um, their rituals inside these crypts. And the crypts in these Gothic, Gothic cathedrals, these sevens, are really a small area where they go and they lay down in it and, and they receive like some type of energy, much like in the, the Great Pyramid when you lay in the sarcophagus, it's actually tuned to F-sharp, which is a part of human resonance and the earth resonance and stuff like that. But people have had the opportunity to be a part of that. The vibration, if you claim that while you're inside of it, it will actually cause your vibe, body to vibrate. So if you know anything about tuning forks, if you take a tuning fork and hit another tuning fork and it's yeah. both vibrating like that, you can set up oh. a vibration that will transcend itself into the next thing. Right. I really right. think that they're trying to, to do this. They're trying to get it to the point that people are vibrating all the same and can control us right. as a universal consciousness. Yes. Hive-minded. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I it is do very, it's I, very high minded. It's it's like having mm-hmm. the queen bee who runs the whole, sh- you know, shebang. People that don't know anything right. about bees, the queen bee is what keeps the hive together, and she's right. the brain. And they're all using a vibration, a umming, uh, think about a bee, and it's kind of like per- something, somebody sitting in a cover position going. Uh, it, it's like that B has got that universal connection to each other, and that keeps the worker bees and all the bees doing what they're supposed to be doing. And if that queen dies, those bees go nuts. They don't even know what to do. It's like they can't even think for themselves. It's like they're they're just stupid. And what does that say about society right now? I mean, right. we can't see this? And I'm like... Okay, if there's something already affecting certain people that they cannot see it, and they're like this worker bees going, well, I don't know what's happening, what's happening, what's happening, I don't know what's happening. You know what I'm saying? They're just like out in left field. They don't see it. And those worker bees, if they don't have that queen in place, are just like that. And the hive, it, 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 stops, it stops being. It doesn't continue without the queen bee or the queen universal mind. And so I I think it's really important to know that this date is coming up. And for some reason, those people that know about the resonance, about the illumination, about the oracle sites and the telluric energy that's there and how those were on dragon paths, I think that there is some weird thing. And I don't don't think this is going to be the end of days. I'm not date setting. But what I'm saying is that there are significant things that's been happening. It's like the blood moons that we had. And people said, oh, well, they passed and nothing happened. I think they're all signs of the end. And that they've been put into place to let people know we are getting closer to a time period when what the Bible says is going to happen is almost upon us. Right. The fact that somebody could map out then those oracles, and these oracle sites were there a long time before this Knights Templar got there. The Knights Templar got their sacred geometry from the Egyptians, 
and from the sacred sciences that go right on back to Cain's lineage and the building of cities and stuff that happened before the flood. No doubt in my mind, it's an evil agenda with an evil vibrational pattern that has been set up for the end of days. If they were not brilliant, how did they pick and say, this is going to be my moon oracle, this is going to be my sun oracle, this is going to be my Mars oracle, you see what I'm saying? And then on the same day, those seven oracles match the sun to the sun on the ground, the moon to the moon on the ground, to Mars up there and the Mars on the ground. All of them match. It's never happened, and it's going to happen at this time. I mean, the Lord told us in Scripture that the heavens were used as warnings. It was right. used to tell us things. I mean, that's how the wise men knew that Jesus was born. You know, it, the heavens yeah. declare it. And and we have taken what I fully believe was the study of the stars and the importance of the study of the stars, and we've turned it into a joke. You know, um, read, your, read your horoscope. You know what I'm saying? Let's take uh-huh. it and do astrology and palm reading. We've allowed it to go into the witchcraft areas instead of understanding that for some reason all of this is happening. People knew about it a long, long time ago when they didn't have the technology that we have. I mean, right now we could probably match something and match something and match something and match something and then try to move it forward, you know, let's say a thousand years and see if it would fall on these places again. But we have the technology to do that. To, to be able to, you know, shoot something here and make it land over here because we have the trajectory pass and we know this one, whatever. They didn't have all that back then. So we're talking right. about something two and 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 years ago uh, that happened. And now, you know, all these things are kind of coming together at the same time, you know, in the last 2,000 years, what John of Patmos said. You know, on the Isle of Patmos, John the Revelator. It, it, you just can't close your eyes to it. And, and it. and it really does concern me having looked at what the Knights Templar did and how they had the sacred sciences. That was something that they hid within themselves, and they, they did it through oaths. They did not really write a lot of things down. They learned it, and then they told a story. It became like a lore, and within the lore was the information that was needed to be passed on. And, and like you and I both know here in Georgia with the Georgia Guidestone, I mean, there's right. a perfect example of protocols being established from way back when saying this has got to be the future of mankind. You know, we're going to get rid of this, we're going to do that, da 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 mm-hmm. um, And they know, they know these things are happening. Yeah, they know these things are going to happen. It's just like NASA knows, like what John was talking about a while ago, the sun's going to get worse. It's hotter than it's ever been. Yeah. If we didn't right. have pivot irrigation here in South Georgia, our crops would be dead right now. In fact, the pine trees are dying in our area. The pine trees, something that lives here all the time and doesn't shed its needles until the fall, are shedding needles everywhere. What happens is you shed those needles, fire. You have no water breaks because the creeks are dried up. Then you get wind. You've got massive fire like they got out in California where you couldn't stop it, literally, because there's no, the, the, the creeks are dried up. I just, I just right. know that if, if you can't look around you and see that this is all different, then I would be saying to myself, if I, if I, heard, if I heard somebody like you and I talking and I didn't understand this, I would be so busy going, Lord, open my mind to understand what is being told because I don't want to get caught up in, you know, a seared mind. I want to know the truth about this. I I want to learn about this. I want you to show me. I I just can't imagine then people turning a blind eye and they're doing it all the time and they're being praised for it. Like I mentioned a while ago, hey, you go, God. That's great. We're so glad you came out of the closet because you're going straight to hell when you die. We're so happy for you. I mean, that just gets me. 
Uh-huh. You cannot be happy about somebody's soul going to hell for eternity. And it's going to happen. I don't care what the Pope says. He does not have it right. I know the other day he changed the Lord's Prayer. He changed it oh to goodness. something totally different about, you know, do not lead us into temptation. He was like, change it to do not let us fall into temptation. You are created in a fallen world. Right. Everybody is sinning. Everybody. You can't live here and not be in sin because you're in, in, in your flesh is sin. You're going to do that. But it's, it, it's like he's saying for God not to let that happen. Well, it's going to happen. You are, you're, a, you're a sinner in a fallen world. And I'm like, did, he, did, did the Pope himself not understand that these were Jesus' words? Go back and look at the translation with Jesus' words. And what does the book of Revelation say? Don't change not one of those words. Right. And I understand that when we went from Greek and Hebrew to translating in English and other languages, that sometimes we don't have the exact word that are written or was, was originally written. Our words may be just a little bit of a hair off about stuff. And you and I talked about that because of the Garden of Eden and the sexual situation between, um, uh, you know, uh, Serpent and Eve. Yeah, and Eve. But, and that's, and it's scary because people aren't getting it that if you start changing all this, then you're losing the context of it. And I'm like, look, Jesus said, lead us not into temptation. He's going, our Father, you know, lead us not in temptation. He's not going to allow us to be led into temptation if we choose to follow him. But yeah. we live in a fallen world, and if we choose to fall, if we choose to fall, God can't stop that. That's our choice. And so right. I'm like, how could the Pope even conceive this? And I'm like, it's like he's saying, I'm God, this isn't quite right, and I'm going to change it because I think this sounds a little bit better. Okay, Uh I understand when people do translations in in books of the Bible, you know, and they sell another book or another Bible that's, you know, newly translated. It's still telling us, don't change this. Don't change this. I mean, it'd be nice if we could say, well, you know, if you do wrong, you don't really have to be worried about condemnation. You really don't have to do this. We just change it. And he's kind of doing, the, unfortunately, the Pope's kind of doing a lot of that. So it does concern me that we've got a, a time period that we know that these oracle sites have been here forever are lining up. We know the guidestones were put in place to kind of talk about future things and what's happening. We know that there's changes in the sun, moon, and stars. We know that, you know, they've got NASA's trying to work with people now, these um, uh, different universities, to come up with these balloon-type things to put in the stratosphere to block the sun out. They know the sun's going to get worse then. Right. They know it's it. It's scriptural. Right. They know it. Yeah, some of the things that I've read and that we released in the Great Commission 3, the end-time apocalypse, is it speaks about how the rain will be withheld and that the ground will become like iron, um, baked like clay, and that right. people will have to, that the rains will be withheld as well during the reign of the Antichrist, and they'll have to dig into the ground seeking out uh, water. Um, and that, you know, is one of the judgments against them for having consumed blood that uh God makes them, you know, that the waters are turned blood red as well uh, with whatever well, the wormwood and all that. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Dr. And we are, and we already see around the world how many places, even with this um, algae that grows and turns the water so blood right. red. And it looks just yeah. like blood. I mean, right. and the more, the hotter the planet gets, the that's going to get more than if we've got this star coming at us is definitely going to hit us called wormwood 
I mean, and we got the sun scorching us to death. The more sun we've got, the more, the heavier, terrible the, the storms, the worse the earthquakes are, just like John was saying. Everything gets worse. It's not going to get better. And we are in a cycle now of downhill spinning where, right. like I say, years ago you could see a little bit here, a little bit there, but we're in a cycle of bad things getting worse. It's right. not going to get better. It's not. Right. Gonna get better. It's all of it. <laughs> The whole portfolio of diverse subjects is all increasing exponentially in its intensity, and yeah. it's it's unless you're like you know doing your homework and following it, um, you know, with with fervor uh, and tracking it, it, and you know, like I had mentioned on a, a show a couple of uh, programs ago, you know, in 20, 2011 was when we started this program. And I remembered all the weird things that were happening in 2011. As a matter of fact, 20, well, 2011 was the last year that we had as many apocalyptic tornado breakouts. We had over 500 tornadoes touchdown reports touched, uh, uh, you know, over in a, like a two month period. The floods and things that are happening, the fires. Back in 2011, we had almost as bad of tornadoes. And floods, but what we didn't have were these humongous apocalyptic fires that we're having now, and um, and uh, the number of volcanoes wasn't even close. The um, the the diversity and uh, and unusualness of the diseases that are out there right now, the return of the bubonic plague, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, disease. Um, uh, groups that they refer to as the Dickens, the Charles Dickens disease groups are returning now. That's right. So, and it, 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 the every single category: UFOs, pestilence and famine, signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, wars and rumors of wars. Take your pick. Every one of them are now kind of like coalescing. They're 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 all coming together in this big gigantic global convergence that is in its totality really as you had mentioned earlier joy essentially a type of a checklist all the things that jesus warned us about in the olivet discourse so it's all yeah. in progress it's just a matter of you know yes. the term I like to use is when God decides to pull the big red lever, uh, and then all hell breaks loose. But anyway, praise God! And that's kind of like a show. that's that's kind of like a woman in travail. You don't know exactly right. the moment that child's going to be born, but she can be in labor for two days, or she can be in labor for five minutes. It's just that intensity is going to get boom, 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 and then the end happens. But that little period of time right there, I think, as you just said, it's getting so much closer that it's it's getting to that point of bam, 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 bam. And when it does, the baby's going to come. Yeah. yeah there, I um, think that the trigger was the fig tree, you know, the blooming of the yeah. fig tree. That was the sign oh, yes. for the powers that they knew this is the time of the end. It's time to hype it up, accelerate it because uh, time is short. Yeah, right. and then the, Satan, to, Satan to tie a ribbon, our dumb being. Yeah, and to tie a ribbon on all this, um, when you add in research of prophecies, dreams, and visions, not not in the last couple right. of years, because there's been seducing spirits that have been released on the world, and we've got a lot of confusion and and incorrect information bubbling up in the in the prophetic realm right now. That's just awful but if you go back prior to 2016 2015 2014 2013 2011 and you take the collections of those prophecies dreams and visions and you create yourself a list one of the things that you quickly realize well and i'll just hold up one of many from a very trustworthy source um uh and and that would be um oh heidi baker who's got the big ministry in uh, mozambique and she was uh, touring the United States and speaking at churches and everything. And the Lord gave her a vision. And uh, th- to just make it short and sweet, the, the Lord, she she saw p- p- 
bunches and bunches and bunches of people lined up, you know, Mercedes, Benzes, Lexus is really nice cars, really nice clothes. And they're lined up in these really huge long lines for food and water. And she said, and it was in mm-hmm. America. And she said to the Lord, how, what's going on here? This is impossible. How, how could, and the Lord said to her, it was the suddenlies that caused it. So, and that by the way, is only one version of probably a thousand similar uh, prophetic revelations uh, that indicate that something big is going to happen. And when it does, we're not going to see it coming. I I honestly believe with all my heart that God has already put it all out on the table. For those of us who have been paying attention, we have our collection. We know what the list Mm -hmm. is. We know what events are going to be happening. And now we're just keeping our eyes open. We don't know when that day is going to happen. No, we no no better than we knew when 9/11 was going to happen. We're not going to know when God allows it to happen, and and it's going to catch people off mm-hmm. by surprise, and they're not going to be ready. They're going to be living in fear instead of living in the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, and they're going to go in the wrong direction, and it's going to cause them to suffer a lot worse than they would have had to if they believed in in the promises of our Father. Praise God. So, who wants to close with a prayer tonight? <laughs> It doesn't matter. I'll be glad to do it. Awesome. All right. Praise God. Go for it. Our Father, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to have come and to have shared the information that you give us through our research, Father. We thank you so much for the ability for John to have a show, for Zen and I to be able to present what we have learned from you all these years, Father. We pray that the people that are listening and the ones that will listen in the future that you bless their lives and that you bless their hearts with a craving and understanding about the end of days so that they and their families might be saved through the knowledge that you've given us and that you've promised us through your word. We thank you for this day and all the blessings upon us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless us. Amen. Right. Praise God. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Zen. Awesome love. Y'all. love. We'll definitely do it next month if you're up for it. I hope that you are. Praise Absolutely. Jesus. And we'll just some emails Absolutely. off. Yes, okay, good. Yes. Love you too. All right. Love awesome. y'all. All right. Love you guys. Take y'all. care. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night for the Wednesday night show, Lord Willing. Also I have a Minister Warren Best of show that's going to be playing. This Tuesday night will be published at 8 o'clock. If you're interested in listening to that, it was a really good one. God bless you all.